Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, March the 8th, uh, 2014, uh, and, and a, the first lovely day mm. of 2014 in the 50s. Love it. 50s, uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the 50s. The first, the first uh, time we're experiencing a, a non-polar vortex weather. Yeah, which I'm very happy about. The furnace probably will not interrupt anybody today. That's that's great to hear. Okay. Good. We'll have a crystal clear, crisp audio on this show. Speaking of, welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And we're coming to you here uh, live and recorded, of course, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in northeastern New Jersey and uh, I will formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of uh, Newsletter Censored which is what we're all about and managing editor okay founded in 1977 I will pipe him aboard um, Newsletter Censored Newsletter censored. Yes. I will pipe him aboard our progressive liberal starship censored. Which I say that is faster than the speed of light. I say that afterwards, but it, it doesn't matter when I say it. Ah. The progressive liberal starship censored with my authentic bosun's whistle that I got in Newport, Rhode Island. Welcome aboard the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Excellent with the weather. Okay. And in general, you're okay? Uh, no. No. I have, uh, Sorry to hear that. When I wake up from my nap at night, you're, you're I have a strange something in my belly. Strange something? It's probably yeah. food. <laughs> mm, you know, yeah. Well, it's 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 it, it can't be that it's a uh, low blood sugar, but it's 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 just sort of like a gnawing. It's not really bad or anything like that, but it seems to go away. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but you I know. can't understand it myself. So. <laughs> You know, well, you wait. I um, I finally got my blood test uh, done by the right uh, lab, a company called LabCorp, which is ex which it has must have a contract with my HMO, Horizon of New Jersey HMO, mm -hmm. and you know because last time I mistakenly went to Quest Diagnostics, mm -hmm. so I go there, and uh, I, well first I had to make an appointment online. What else is new? Mm -hmm. And um, I went there, and uh, of course the first words out of their mouth is, sign in, you have your insurance card? Uh, you gotta love this American healthcare and capitalist United States, man. Can I see your insurance card? They, they're not too shy about asking for that. Uh, and, uh, okay, as opposed to a real governmental, uh, you know, uh, uh, system like in Europe, Canada, you know where that's not the issue and I go there and I'm in and out relatively quick but I noticed compared to Quest Diagnostics um, LabCorp which I was very happy about and surprised to see they only took two tubes of blood out of me they did, did not give me any fecal uh, specimen kit to bring home you know to collect uh, my uh, fecal matter they didn't take four tubes out of me and uh, so I'm thinking just maybe do you think quest diagnostics wanted to ring up a bigger bill with horizon of new jersey by giving me taking more tubes of blood out of me and giving me this uh, fecal collection kit not if you have an hmo because i asked the uh the lab corp ladies and they said no this is the only thing that's on your the only thing that your primary care doctor is requesting is complete blood tests with two tubes of blood Mm. There's no 
nothing else we need we don't need more tubes and we do not need to collect your your uh, feces fecal specimen I go really it's funny how Quest Diagnostics wanted a lot done so I'm just thinking that they're probably doing what other wonderful healthcare organizations do in America overcharge the insurance companies for things that are not required or requested by the doctor uh, it's a possibility in that but ripping off HMO's, Medicare and, and, and insurance HMOs try to save money yes the less they spend on you the more they make so if all they need technically is two tubes of blood and nothing else that is what they'll take supposedly supposedly but based on the experience I had with uh, the unfortunate experience I had with Quest Diagnostics they are still in the Chisler's Hall of Shame um, now I have a message for people who shop online which is becoming the common way to shop the modern way to shop less people are going to retail stores because uh, you know there's more overhead so the prices are higher plus it's more efficient to order online because uh, many times the shipping is free and also but you have to know your product when you order you gotta know your product well sometimes you have to use the search field yes uh, Google shopping is what I personally use I, I track down who has the lowest price with no shipping charges but you have to know your product like if you're gonna order a pair of shoes or boots you better damn well know your size because you don't want to be stuck shipping it back which will cost you money mm -hmm. and we all know uh, UPS and, and FedEx uh, I'm not sure about the post office because they're they're much more reasonable but UPS and FedEx are ripoff when it comes to sending packages they are both in the Chisler's Hall of Shame this week. Yeah, sometimes uh, when I order something online, uh, both FedEx and UPS have the same price. Sometimes they do. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I'm getting at as far as ordering online, which uh, the best places to order, which is what I am always recommended for lowest price, would be Amazon.com or eBay. Dot yeah, com. Yes, Amazon, eBay. You can get practically anything at the lowest price, but buyer has to beware in this case. I ordered something uh, for my aquarium. It was a uh, live Java moss, and they said it was a small piece of, it was a small sample, which will grow. I didn't know the damn thing was going to be the size of a dime. <laughs> Coming from Singapore, I mean, come on, give me. You know what? What is the size of a dime? The size of my my middle finger. But it's going to grow to what? Well, it didn't grow because the internet said uh, fish don't like the taste of Java moss. But my goldfish ate it up. Well, it ain't going to grow now. Maybe the goldfish will grow. It, it gave the goldfish a little fiber in their system, but oh my God. little metamucil. But the prop, the thing is, misinformation online. Everybody's a freaking expert. Yeah, there is. And there's too much, too many conflicting uh, advice coming from people on the internet. And Misinformation. Sometimes uh, the details on a product and everything are not complete. That is what I'm getting at. And also, what, especially when it comes to pets, if you're ah. gonna if you're gonna acquire a pet online to save money, you have to understand one thing research that that animal to death get all different opinions because like I said before every Tom Dick and Harry's an expert everybody's the foremost authority on on the subject and you're gonna get conflicting information get it from more than one source please uh, you know but you know that speaking of or, uh, buyer beware when you order from eBay you know the uh, uh, the lovely uh, kefir grains I ordered and I was making my own kefir. Well, nobody would tell me and re return my my email question 
and I couldn't find it online. Nobody would tell me if kefir grains are supposed to be stored in the refrigerator or room temperature. Now you make kefir in room temperature, mm. but you're adding milk. Ah. I left the kefir grains in a container with no milk and they died and became putrid and rancid and smelled like a corpse. Ah. <laughs> Excuse me. I so, am. so I lost, I had to dump it, I had to flush it. I lost my lovely, and they grew. I mean, I had, I had a pretty decent amount of, of organic kefir grains and I lost them all because the person the farm who grows them didn't bother to tell me uh, and answer my email as to whether or not they should be refrigerated. Nobody had any information about refrigerating kefir grains. Mm -hmm. So shame on those people. Please be beware. And uh, I couldn't find the information, by the way, as far as storage of kefir grains. I couldn't find it either way. Refrigerate, refrigerate or don't refrigerate. I could have, my kefir grains would have been plump and healthy and alive today if I knew that they should be stored in the refrigerator. So now if I want to do it again, I got to order it again, spend the whatever five bucks when and, sh which, and then shipping and, uh, and through trial and error, I got to grow them all, all over again, you know, because of people like this that don't bother to inform you and educate you. I had the same situation with ordering a pet, an exotic pet. Nobody gives you, all it takes is one sheet of paper. Nobody gives you detailed information on how to care for anything except the air plants. My Talancias, I got so much fantastic detailed information that I'm, I'm very happy with. Uh, Air Plant City and as well as this um, uh, this company on the internet, this other company, um, I can't remember the name, but uh, you know, they send, especially Air Plant City, they send detailed infor information. It's called a care sheet and the care sheet is very detailed complete. and complete. And that's what you have to send to your consumer. Um, okay, simple as that. There's no instructions that come with it. Everybody should send a care sheet and a detailed care sheet. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what pisses me off the most. Um, Mr. Thirsty himself, Muppet Face Paul Ryan. Oh, God. Uh, made a couple asinine Republican statements. What else? Uh, first, he was on uh, a local Wisconsin uh, radio show where he said that uh, the minimum wage law actually hurts the poor. Mm -hmm. Then now he made a statement saying that poor children receiving free school lunch is heartless. It's a detriment to them. How the hell is helping the poor a detriment to the poor? Because that's taking money away from the rich. But but he doesn't say that. <laughs> oh, of course they don't say that. I mean, they believe in redistribution upward. It, it, it's, a, it's a disservice. It hurts the poor. Oh, minimum wage hurts the poor. Welfare hurts the poor. Food stamps it, 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 it hurts, hurts them and, it, and degrades them. Everything is negative when it comes to social services to a well, Republican. They're compl they complain that there's uh, all these 40-some million people on food stamps. Well, uh, guess what, Mr. Paul Ryan? That's because your economy is crap. Right. And it has nothing to do with Barack Obama. Well, the douchebag, uh, the douchebag Muppet face Paul Ryan doesn't mention, uh, you know, knowing that Republicans are the biggest hypocrites of all time, he doesn't mention about all the free money and, w and corporate welfare that goes out to the rich. Of course. He, he doesn't mention that, but, but to, to give a few crumbs to the poor and to give some poor children free school lunch, which is, a, is, is, a, is like a, a, a tiny tick on an elephant's ass. It's like a drop in a bucket, for God's sakes. He makes a big deal about that. Every, everything that is designed to help the poor is a big problem with these That's Republicans. That's correct, because it's taking money from the top. 
But where's the that comeback? Where's the come? Top. Where's the comeback when people like Paul Ryan are on a show? Where uh, Where is the rebuttal? Where are the people telling them you're 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 a you're a mean son of a bitch for wanting to take free school lunches well, away I from poor children? Well, I can tell you one thing: he's not. What? A Christian? Hell no. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm sure. But the, he claims to be. Listen, I'm sure the children of all these Republican congressmen and senators. I'm sure they're very well fed. Yes, they are. And, they I'm are very and I'm sure they get to go on lavish vacations with their daddy and mommy, and they don't miss a meal. Uh, yeah, but they want to keep it that way. But, you see, if you are not an elitist, then the hell with you. Unless you're, unless you're a fertilized egg or an embryo. Oh, yeah, I said that the other day on Facebook. Somebody yeah. put something up there, and I said... You know, yeah. Oh, they love the they love the embryo and the fetus, but the born child, the hell with that. Oh yeah, not if you not if you're born. Oh, good God! Unless you're born with a a big silver spoon in your mouth. Oh, then you get into club. If you're a rich kid, man, they they probably give you a country club membership or so. Uh, you know, I mean, they love you if you're a rich kid, but as soon as you're a kid in need, anybody in need, anybody in need. <laughs> They don't like that. I mean, uh, isn't it isn't it funny that you could be, you could start off having um, a very important, uh, uh, well-paying job, and then all of a sudden get laid off, lose your house, and end up that, in a tent. That's your fault, though. And it's your fault yeah. that you got laid off, and you're homeless, and you're poor, and you could be a real smart person, really smart, and uh, that can't find a job. And suddenly you become part of the invisible in America. That's correct. You're now, now a scofflaw. You are a vagrant. Speaking of invisible. Yeah. Where did all those people go in Lakewood, New Jersey? Yeah, where did they when go? When they knocked down all the tents and etc. in the woods. They did evict them? Yes, they did. How come I didn't see it on the news? I don't know, but they did. Where the hell did they go? Did they find affordable housing for everyone? I don't think so. They gotta go somewhere. Exactly. So what, where are they? What about the tent city in Florida with the veterans? Are they? They're still there, right? They're still there. As well, far which as is them. despicable. Unfortunately, which is despicable, by the way, correct. that our veterans have to live in the woods in that's a tent. Correct. Hold on, please. <coughs> it's despicable that our vets should should do without when they come home. From the phony baloney. Well, like the Republicans, you know, they they would rather that the people, the, the the soldiers die on the battlefield and don't come home and make bills for us. They prefer the Republicans prefer the body bag. That's correct. It's to, cheaper. It's it's cheaper in the long run for the elitists, but it's okay for them to go to war, to 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 steal oil from uh, other countries. Well, they're yelling at uh, the conservatives. The neocons are yelling at Putin for invading another country. Uh, may I remind them about Iraq? Yeah, whatever happened. What the hell did the United States do? We don't hear about Iraq. Anymore. Under G.W. Bush and Mr. Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Cheney. Yeah, the, the, the cyborg. The yeah. cyborg heart Cheney. What is uh, the guy that shoots his friend in the face on a, on a hunting trip? <laughs> it's not even a hunting trip, it was like a gated. Uh, uh, um, reserve. Uh, speaking of that, I I heard the other day that there's a picture of Putin with his shirt off as usual. He always does that. About with a tiger that he supposedly killed. The tiger was tranquilized. The tiger was tied down so that he could come and just shoot the damn thing. Like a photo. Album. What a big what Teddy Roosevelt here? What a big stud. What about the fact that Putin wrestles uh, bears, brown bears? <laughs> Was did the bear have a muzzle? I can almost guarantee the bear had a muzzle. <laughs> of course. Might he might have been drugged up too? Uh, absolutely. Sedated a brown. Oh yeah, he really looks like he can wrestle a brown bear. Yeah. He's got. I hear the hotels have Putin in it with his shirt off. Yeah. In all the rooms and uh, riding a horse, you know. He's looking worse than, like cool. I mean, Saddam Hussein had his mug on billboards everywhere, but it was just his face with a smile. <laughs> it wasn't Putin without a shirt posing, you know, you know, 
like he's uh, like Tarzan or something. You well, know? the Republicans now are saying, hey, we warned Obama back in, uh, like when Mitt Romney was running for president, they said, we warned him that Putin should not be trusted and that he could invade places and et cetera, et cetera. We warned him. And Obama said, hey, that, that those policies are 1980s. Your foreign for, policies first are of 1980s. All, from what I understand, um, there are people, there is like a, now correct me if I'm wrong, there, there is a um, sort of a, a militia in, in Crimea that are pro-Russian, pro-Putin. Most of the people are. And they want to secede from the Ukraine? Yeah. Okay, so... Well, the Crimea has been uh, the Russians' oh, Resort? warm water port well, for it's a, a long it's, time. It's a peninsula. So it's a, it's a, it's a port in yeah. the Black Sea. It's, it's exactly. probably, there's probably resorts there that Russians go to. Well, that's not what they're interested in. They're interested it's in port. putting their military boats there and all this crap. Oh, you mean like the Russian that's Navy? Yes. The nuclear submarines means. and... Uh, yeah. So that's all that's all about. Well, the, the Crimean people, it's like Northern Ireland. If the people of Northern Ireland do not want to be associated with the Republic of Ireland, that's their choice. They should be able to vote on it and, and decide if they want to be part of England, uh, the United Kingdom or not. Same thing now if Crimea has a vote and the people want to be part of Russia and they want to secede from the Ukraine, then that's it. They, they, they secede. What, what's, what's so... Now, I don't know why the, the journalists are getting like beat up by this uh, this uh, Crimean uh, uh, army or whatever they are. I don't know why the journalists are being targeted and, and roughed up. Well, the Ukrainian army is only about 120,000. Are people. they roughing up the journalists? And, or is it the, uh, the, the Russians that are in there now are only 20, like 20,000. The Ukrainian army has been very uh, holding their liquor, so to speak. Uh -huh. They haven't been doing anything. They've been quiet. But they, they seem to not, but it seems like journalists are not welcome in the Crimea. Well, probably, uh, well, that's because the Russians don't want them there. Then the why, Russians, the the Russians why don't they, why don't they get out? The Russians? No! They the, figure the, they own the Crimea. I th let me finish, the journalists. Please. The journal. if they're not wanted and they're being beat up, then why go? Now they have to put, report the news. Unless they're like paparazzis, they're like, they don't take no for an answer, you know. Well, they have to report the news, and that's where the news well, then, is happening. Well, then, that's where they are. Well, then they're going to get beat up. Well, they get beat up then. That's all. Yeah. Who's beating them up? <coughs> I don't know. I think it looks like they were they're military personnel. They have uh, rifles. They have. Ah. Well, I don't know if it's uh, there. I assume they're the uh, people in Crimea that are pro-Putin, pro-Russia. That could be too. I think that's what. That could be. You know, but uh. That could be. Life is a lot more simpler than people make it. It's like, just butt out. The United States should just simply butt out of other cultures and other people's affairs unless there's a human rights atrocity going on, human rights violation. You know what I mean? Um, General Schmedley Butler. Believe me, the Fukushima situation is much more important than sticking your nose into the Crimea. <laughs> Well, it, so far, the United Crimea. States has not Crimea stuck its nose in, and that's why the neocons don't like that. I hear there's a there's a bunch of U.S. Obama's sailors. Weak. Obama's weak. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, well, because Obama probably doesn't like war profiteering like the Republicans do. And what about McCain? He's suddenly uh, Ooh, not so... the war hawk. He's suddenly not so uh, moderate of a no. Republican anymore. No. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be great if Bernie Sanders ran with Elizabeth Warren? Wouldn't that make a great ticket? It would make a great ticket, but it will never happen. You see. What if they, what, I think Bernie wants to run. Bernie said that he would make a good president. Oh, he didn't say if he wanted to run yet. He understands that he will never get elected. Because he's not a two-partier? He's an independent? Because he will never get the money. 
Uh, Monty. Okay. Monty, I forgot about he that. He and Elizabeth Warren. You see what they did with Elizabeth Warren. They never, they kept putting her off from her job that she was going to take with the, uh, to be able to tell the banks what to do. Okay, the Republicans did not want that. Uh, they get, because they don't like regulations. That's correct. They they are really scum of the earth, the Republicans. You know, hope you people know that, you know. Yes, real, they are, real, and their little mouthpiece over there at Fox News is really the scum of the earth. Who? All of them over at Fox oh, News. Oh, they're scum, yeah. They're, they're, uh, what about all the, all the Fox News bl blonde bombshells? You notice they're not very inclusive when Actually, it comes to... Actually, now they got a few blacks over there. Oh, sell-out right-wing African-Americans that have sold out to their... Going sold alive, out baby. their people and, and have aligned, aligned themselves with conservatives? Mm -hmm. Shame on them. That's mm -hmm. like that... Uh, what's her name? Uh, Michelle uh, Malkin? Malkin, Mal Malkin yeah. of Hawaii, the Philippine woman who totally turns her back on, on her poor country and becomes conservative mm -hmm. and sucks up to the fat cat? You know, uh, here's oh. the thing that uh, uh, people should ask, like conservatives who uh, protect the rich and, and uh, call the poor lazy and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and that you can make it opportunity, pull up by the bootstraps, all of this other crap. Yeah. Right? When they yak and they say how good it is and how uh, everybody can become rich and et cetera, et cetera you got to ask me, say, hey, how come you're not as rich as Bill Gates? Oh, that douchebag uh, face guy with the, with the, with the Mo Howard haircut. You know, he passed up the, the, the world's richest man, the Mexican gentleman. Hey, Carlos. Carlos, he, he... What is Carlos Slim, I think it is? Carlos Slim. Amarillo Sounds Slim. like a poker player, don't it? Carlos like, Slim. Yeah. He passed him up. Now, right now, Bill Gates is the richest man in yeah. the world. He's worth like $100 billion or $200 billion or some uh, uh, insane, obscene amount. And and he's a, he's a friggin... Now, now, now he's involved with uh, peddling uh, poison throughout the world. Polio vaccines. 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 vaccines yeah. 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 He saw he Causing so, autism. He sold his soul yeah. to Satan's world. Well, he thinks he's doing God's work, though. He could think anything he wants. Wall Street see, thought they were doing God's work. See, you say this, yeah. but instead, you should be saying, how dare they think they're doing God's work. I don't respect their opinion. I don't respect perception, human perception. Yeah, but the other people do. Well, they're 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 they're, they're, they're idiots. They're deluded. Uh, yeah, they're idiots, idiots. But they they control things. I'm sorry. I'm not going to suck up to any corporation or any fat cat. That's not the <laughs> issue. <clears throat> the issue is they control things. Yeah. Now, how do you stop them? You mean he who has the most gold rules? Rules. Well, they own the media. <laughs> That, that's a big one right there. Oh, and they, they, owning the media and making the other media of no effect. Liberal media. Now, I had mainstream. a... Mainstream. Mainstream. I had a little mainstream. debate with um, our um, commercial uh, voiceover artist, William H. Morrill III. He, he says he prefers CNN because it's very unbiased. They give you both sides of the story and then you decide. Supposedly. Supposedly, I says why, why, uh, why be be, uh, why apply courtesy to the right wing? They they're not entitled to respect and courtesy, in my book. They're they're vile. That's correct. They're vile demons in my book. That's correct. So they should not have any uh, uh, a blowhorn. To 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 present two sides of everything. The both sides have to be honest and fair and not lie. If you're presenting, I understand where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only fair to be unbiased. It's the right thing to do, which is true. But he does believe in a fierce debate, like let's say a crossfire, which I hear is still on the air. 
you know, where two can two two sides can really go at it, you know. Of course, it gets out of hand, you know. Because Supposedly, that's what the McLaughlin report is on oh, Sunday, that guy, but that's he's on in the morning. You know, who the hell watches him? It's eleven thirty, I think he's on. Plus, he's isn't he getting up in years? He's up there in years, you know, like Joe Franklin. He's, <laughs> you know. But the point is, uh, you know, yes, if you can have a fair debate where uh, a, a person, um, person. The first person gets three minutes, then you shut up. The second one gets three minutes to, re to reply, to rebuttal, and it goes back and forth like a, like a presidential debate. But it's not like that. They're both bucking heads, interrupting each other, shouting. So, you know, you know what the viewer hears is like a bunch of noise. Cacophony. It's a cacophony of, of cockamamie claptraps. Like, but the point is that the... the uh, but God does not debate the devil. He doesn't? No. He doesn't tell him that he's a lying piece of crap? No, he's already... Well, why does already, it, How come he don't do that? Because uh, he uses the devil to find out who he wants to be on his side. Well, Satan is very crafty and very tricky. Well, he masquerades as an angel of light. And he, and unfortunately, there's a lot of numbskulls uh, that are, you know, humans, humanoid numbskulls, that will be tricked and will That's be lost correct. and will be lost and are too stupid to research and are too lazy to open up the Bible. And so on and so on, and you know that that's the yeah. I get everything. Well, my point yeah. is, my <clears throat> point is that truth does not debate falsehood, because then truth can come out looking like a fool. Well, what if you say like, okay, what I just told you, here's the proof to back it up. Where's your proof, liar? And then well, the liar goes, humana, 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 humana. No, but. <laughs> In most cases, he might do that, but unfortunately, in the cases of the uh, conservative Republicans, they don't accept the truth. You see, then what? The same thing with their religion. So their ideology. <laughs> their ideology. <coughs> they say, you cannot uh, 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 approve these things. These are matters of faith. But but, but they're not proven though. They're matters of faith. But this, they do not have but it's to be just, proven. But it's just based on perception. That's correct. But according to them, it doesn't need proof. But things that are not proven should not be law. Uh -huh. And not one penny of taxpayers' money should go towards anyone's religion because religion, religions are based on faith and they cannot be proven. So why should somebody's perception... Uh, like, what does that mean? Like, if somebody in the Catholic Church says, Oh, God is really this uh, Caucasian uh, old, uh, man with a long white beard, long white hair, with a robe, white mm. robe, by the way, hanging out in the clouds. His throne is up on the, uh, in the clouds. And the you have... Heaven. And you have... Right, heaven is up in the sky. And you have to believe it because I say so and I control the media. So, therefore, his perception of God and Christianity or religion is the one that gets out promoted out there because they own the media. Well there's like over 2,000 denominations calling themselves Christian. <laughs> yeah, okay. organized religion. Yeah. And each one of them is different. Well, the book of the, the Mormons have their uh, rules and laws. Well, you and know, until Mitt Romney <coughs> ran uh, I don't even think that the Mormons called themselves Christians. It's like a cult. But maybe? Mitt Romney had to make himself look like a Christian and look like he uh, cared about uh, the mainstream person. Yeah, right. But then that 47% thing got out and that really kicked him in the ass, didn't it? Yeah, God, God bless the, the hidden uh, yeah. recorder, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the microphone. Uh, that trips up a lot of Republicans, don't it? Any, any, any espionage type of video or audio recorder, hidden, concealed, is a wonderful invention. Yeah, they'd like to do away with that, believe me. Oh, they don't like that. They don't like that. 
They also don't like uh, Pope Francis, and I knew they were going to hate Pope Francis. No, they don't like him. The right wing, and it's obvious why. Pope Francis has compassion. He's pro-poor. He's pro-people. Uh, hmm. You know. Unlike people like Joel Osteen, prosperity preachers, yeah. who are actually totally against what the Bible says, and yet they consider themselves Christian. Well, they don't present any any scriptural fact on their on their shows. It's and all, if they do, they change it. Yeah. So somebody posted a banner: uh, "Happy birthday, Joel Osteen." Good. I didn't even leave a a, a, re, a comment. I, I I just said I just said to myself, "Who the hell cares?" So what what does that mean? Happy birthday, Joel Osteen. That means he <laughs> has his following. He has his fans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? The cult of personality. The cult of personality. Yeah. Because he is not doing what Jesus did, which was to preach the kingdom of God. Not about himself. Oh yeah, I, I was born, I, I lived, I, I died, and I was res resurrected. That's what they preach. That's what they consider the gospel. But the gospel is the good news of the kingdom of God. And how to get into it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Not well, into heaven. Well, there's plenty out there that believe you can uh, have a conversation with God about anything, and they believe. Oh, George Bush did. And God told them to go into a rat. And they believe in the immortal soul that flies up in the sky. Yeah. And things like that, but. Uh, and it's going to be one with God in heaven, so that it can play its harp all. No, well, what what they believe in is that the uh, the saved. Uh, will avoid the uh, the pain and suffering of the tribulation. They don't want to deal with the tribulation. What is that? What they're saved from? For? No, they're saved. What because, are they saved from? Well, they said for? that the Holy Spirit changes them as as, as a person. How they get the Holy Spirit? They, it just it just comes. Uh, they get it. No, it comes they don't. In, get just it. comes into them. That's not what the Bible says. Well, they they you got to repent first, and you got to. Well, be you a, have to be called. You got to be a believer. Yeah. You see, you cannot approach God. He has to call you for a certain job that he may need well, you to do. They're insisting that uh, the Bible says if you repent and you acknowledge him, then you are, you're, you're saved by the death of Christ. You're saved by his uh, blood. It That's pays. It the blood of Christ pays for your sin. Yes. But again, you must be called. You don't do any of this on your own. You can't be born again. Yeah, that that that's a little. That's this is all crap. How could you be born again? This is all crap. <clears throat> well, this is why a lot of people are 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 in the uh, the material world, in Satan's world. They're part of the world, and they're not spiritual people. Most people are not. Well, of course they're not. Because how could they be when they're in the influence is the from the Satan? Yeah, well, the you, influence of the world. This, is from there's, Satan. Some, there's so much evidence that people are in the world. I mean, let's take uh, let's take something like dating, like online dating. You know, they all they all insist that you put down your income and your uh, your status. Your now, what the hell does a what material? What if you put down poor? What if you put down po folk? Poor slob. Well, there, there's nothing that says po folk. It's, it's, you got to put down for like uh, from zero to twenty-five thousand a year, and from or, or from twenty-five thousand a year to fifty thousand, seventy-five thousand. Oh, ain't nobody people. gonna, ain't nobody gonna talk to anybody making zero to twenty-five. Believe me. <laughs> but, but that defeats the purpose of the of the site. The site is supposed to match people for possible romance and love and love yeah They're well not, that, material yeah. things are not supposed to be uh, involved, involved yes. in that you know yeah now if you if you look at that if you listen to that nauseating uh founder of uh, e-harmony the guy with the pudgy face 
you know, and, and the guy with the, the Mr. Rogers uh, voice, sounds like a damn child molester like Mr. Rogers. Ooh. If you listen to him, he doesn't mention anything about physical chemistry. It's all about, you know, compatibility. I'm sorry. Without physical chemistry, if that other person don't scratch you where you itch, it ain't going to happen. You might be very good friends to have the same hobbies, but... Mm -hmm. The other per you gotta dig the other person. What about opposites attract? You gotta dig them. I mean, I mean, physical magnets? chemistry, huh? What about magnets? The South and North Pole, they repel each other. South and South, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, sometimes the uh, the uh, somebody very different from your culture and you is very intriguing, enticing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, but but I'm saying, well, you know. Uh, the relationship is very hard to determine. It is. What, it, you know, is going to keep two people together. In other words, you can't make a science exactly. out of love, romance. You so can't, you can't put it on paper. Right. And, you know, oh, I, I make zero to 25,000. So oh, I'm going to love you. That's like a hooker saying, uh, you like like an Asian hooker say you very handsome. Oh, why you you have no you forgot your wallet? You not so handsome anymore. They did that a lot in Vietnam. Me so horny, me rub you, you wrong time. You uh, you want to make a? I don't know what, what they, they say. said. Make five dollar. You want sucky? my sister? My sister. My sister. I, sister I, sound it, I sound in Mexican there. <laughs> my f fucky sucky. Five dollar. Yeah, 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 five yeah, dollar. Yeah. Five dollar. Five dollar. Five dollar. But the point is, yeah, no ticky, no washi. Yeah. You got no ticky. No washi. No, but the thing is, hold on. We just made some funny statements. Hey, somebody messed with my levity bells, man. Oh, I'm sorry there, Mr. Anonymous. You know, but you can't make a science out of it. And so when you got Mr. Pudgy face, uh, go, you, there's hundreds and several hundreds of marriages uh, uh, put together by eHarmony every year. We're, we're responsible for hundreds of marriages. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's all talk. I don't know how true that is. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there's nothing with that organization that deals with do you, what type do you like, what's your mm -hmm. type. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Mother Teresa was, was most likely a hell of a nice woman. But she's ugly as can be. I can't get intimate. Well, good thing she was a nun. I can't. Yeah, she was a nun. So you know, I, I, you know what I mean. Like, like you could be the you could be, you could be the salt of the earth. But if the other person doesn't find you attractive, uh -huh. if there's no physical chemistry, it's out the window. Okay, now I know we've 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 uh, bantered for a long time. Yeah. So we, before lunch, we might have time for one reading so grab well I got a couple of smallies here we can deal with we'll knock off the smallies yeah, yeah. okay Boston Massachusetts a lawmaker has approved a bill on Thursday to punish those who secretly take photographs of the sexual or intimate parts of women or children in public. Oh, children, that's bad. And, and if, you, if it's a woman, you're a, they're a peeping Tom, right? They're considered a, a peeping Tom. You mean under the skirt uh, cell phone photography? Yeah, yeah, some perverts are doing that. The vote came a day after the state's highest court ruled that a man who took cell phone photos up the skirts of female passengers riding the Boston subway didn't violate state law because the law only applied to people who are nude or partially nude. <laughs> the new legislation expands the photo ban and sets the maximum penalty at no more than two years in jail and a five thousand dollar fine or five years and ten thousand dollar fine if the victim is under 18 years of age. I'm sure no one on a subway wants their fiance, girlfriend or wife to be uh, 
to be a victim of something like that, you know, uh, um, it will cause uh, it, it will cause uh, severe violence upon the perpetrator. But um, you know, uh, uh, if it involves a minor, that could be considered child pornography mm -hmm. in my in my book. However, the child pornography law was quite vague because it included nudists. That's true. N n people that are nudists, the whole family attends. Some time ago, there was it's weird. a. It's a weird. Uh, there was a case yeah. of a woman, I believe. I think it was a woman, who used to take pictures of young boys and girls, and she was accused of child pornography. Well, who's to say she won't turn around and, and sell them to some sicko website? You know, and get money. Well, for who them. knows that part of it? The point is that uh, the law made a criminal of someone who was not a criminal. Okay? Wind is picking up out there. The law cannot do that. But it does in many instances. Well, you are, what you're saying is if somebody um, takes upon themselves to photograph. Uh, naked children at a nudist colony or a nude beach or wherever okay. how about in the bathtub in your own house yeah. for artistic purposes see that see that's a, not for pornography that, it, it's complex it's it's ah, complex. but wait a minute that one justice I believe it was Potter Stewart but the children, he said you know pornography obscenity when you see it well, you can't, you shouldn't, if, if, if your child is a minor, you, you shouldn't, like, like, force them to pose naked well, for a photo. What are you putting all of these things into here for? Forcing and Bernard. These things are not involved. You think it might have... It is artistic. You think it the might... The woman took pictures yeah. for artistic purposes. You think it might, uh, and she had no... She That's had no, correct. She had no sick fetish about, uh, That's about correct. children. That's correct. You think maybe they're trying to protect children from being kidnapped from perverts and, and sickos? As far as pictures are as concerned? As far as uh, keeping... What does that have to do with that? There are like three... Why, why do you think sickos kidnap little children? There but, are 300,000, I think, kids go disappeared every year in America. Right. Where do they go? What do they do? Who does this to them? That who? Uh, we don't give a shit. We put them on milk bar cartons. Something's going on. Whether it be human trafficking and in, um, in pornography or what, I don't know what's going on. But there's, there's some. There's more to it than just yeah. children disappearing. Exactly. So why would the law come after uh, someone who was innocent? And, and, and the same thing goes for the war on drugs. There's more to it than meets the eye, than, than the, the Americans. Oh. There's more to it than just the war on drugs. There's, there's a lot of, like Jesse Ventura would say, there's a lot of surprises, uh, a lot of skeletons in many closets, you know, and uh, the Americans are kept in the dark, and they shouldn't be. In line with what we just read. Right. A man who took cell phone photos up the skirts of women riding the city subway did not violate state law because the women were not nude or partially nude. Massachusetts highest court ruled on Wednesday. See, this is this is what I'm trying. What I was trying to get at there. Laws that are made are sometimes inadequate because they're not thought out properly. Okay? Yeah. The, the Supreme Judicial Court overruled a lower court <laughs> that had upheld charges against Michael Robertson, who was arrested in August 2010 by transit police who set up a sting after getting reports that he was using his cell phone to take photos and video 
up female riders skirts and dresses. Existing so-called peeping Tom laws protect people from being photographed in dressing rooms and bathrooms when nude or partially nude. But the way the law is written, it does not protect clothed people. Stupid. In public areas, the court said. Lawmakers said they would correct that. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> Thank what they do much. is right. Now the other reading is it short enough to just bang out? Well, those two were short. Oh, you, you already blew by two. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Let's take a, a lunch break then. It is time uh, for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and it will be followed by my visit with William H. Moore the third, our commercial uh, voiceover artist. <laughs> Uh, and then we will go to commercial promo after William Morrow, and then of course back to this show. And um, it's it's like I said before, it's very nice outside in the fifties Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm here with William H. Morrow III, and uh, how, how are you feeling, sir? Quiet and tired. Quiet and tired. My yeah. good buddy Phil is here, though, with me, so that's that, good, too. That is true. That is true. The one and only, the fabulous Phil. How are you, fabulous Phil? Doing good. That's good, fabulous Phil. Okay, I have something to say here about uh, this, um, well, we know there's a lot of scams floating around in this country, the United States. The car diagnostics computer scam where no mechanic diagnosed your problem the old-fashioned way using his mechanical skills using his mind they have to hook it up to the computer to get the code off of your car computer and that's they usually charge you eighty ninety dollars for that otherwise they won't do any work on your car well the bottom line whether it's with the computer or not the old-fashioned way you still didn't know who was lying to you. They lied to you back then with that before the computer. Yeah. They're lying to you now. But I mean, you just don't know. 80 or 90 bucks just to diagnose your... Who came up with that number? You got, you got a point. Who did come up with that number? Why is an MRI so expensive in medicine? Because they're trying to pay off the, the, the expense or the cost of the machine quickly. That's why. It doesn't justify the thousands of dollars. No. Phil, I wish you'd shut up. Phil? No, I we want input. Point. That's a lot of coin. Oh, great comment. That's a lot of what? Comment. Not the best comment in the world. <laughs> Get Phil. <laughs> well, he... Uh, I got to tell you, he, it, it, it is a bit much. Yes, it, it is a lot. 80, 90 bucks? Sure. Um, yeah. Now, um... When I was a mechanic. We wouldn't even charge you to look at it, the troubleshoots, the diagnostics. That was back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what, what dealership you went to, that's just the way it was. We didn't we didn't work on it. We weren't going to try to work on it unless we couldn't fix it. Unless we had the parts. We knew the car inside and out. It's just the way it is. I mean, it could be training. It could be whatever it is today with the automotive industry. I grew up it's with still this. Still the number one industry. Yeah, I, I grew up with this kid. His name was Tiny because he was he was really big big kid for his age. He's still a big man, right? But he was an old-fashioned crackerjack mechanic that just looked under your hood and just was able to diagnose problems by 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 listening and seeing. But to charge people like eighty or ninety bucks a pop just to diagnose it—I mean, to me, that's a racket. Yeah, that that's a bit of that's a bit of a scam, a bit much. If I was the people, I wouldn't even go to those places. My dealership. 
I'm not saying any names here, but they, they don't even charge me that to look at my car. Well, because you bought your car at that dealership. Exactly. And, and out of respect, out of goodwill for their customers. I've been a lifetime customer of Temperance. Some, oh yeah, like twenty something years now. Oh, oh yeah, if you're, if you're so a the lifetime. Thing about that with the dealer, I prefer the dealer over any of these other small yeah. RNS Strauss only. Yeah. Of his dealership things. doesn't charge him for diagnostics Ain't because, nothing. out of respect for the fact that he kept on buying sure. cars. How many people does that happen to? Loyalty. Everybody that goes there happens. Well, that's a rarity, though. What's the honor? Very rare. Well, only because yeah. they've been in business so long. They do a tremendous amount of volume and they have a great reputation. It is a rarity. Yeah. And it did take me forever to figure that out. But it is kind of it is kind of crappy so, to do that to a, a exactly. loyal. If you're charging eighty nine dollars, that's that's there's no way. Or ninety, whatever you said, eighty. Yeah, eighty or eighty to ninety. Like R N S Strauss, they'll hit you between eighty, 80, 80 to ninety. They're gone. They're belly up. Oh, they did. Right, they they gone. Left. They're gone. Yeah. Wow. So they're gone. Did you hear about Sears Service Center years ago in Hackensack? They were, they were, they were taking um, uh, rebuilt alternators, spray painting them silver, and charging customers for brand new uh, alternators. Let's say, and but they got caught. The uh, state attorney general came down on them and closed them down at that time. Well, that's, that's been going on for years. We used to call it a rebuilt alternator. But the average person doesn't well, really... We tell them we could save you this amount of money and here's your rebuild from the junkyard. And we would give them one year to two year warranty on it or out yeah. the door policy kind yeah. of thing. But we would tell them back in the day. Today, I don't know. Yeah, I'm Maybe they're not as honest with them. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about... Like Bill was saying, they lie. Taking a rebuild, making it look pretty, and selling it as a brand new alternator. Oh, you know? That's not right. <laughs> Can't do that. Well, again, there's no regulation, then there's no, there's no watchdogs. Exactly. They're because we have Republican Congress, they deregulated companies, corporations, and, and like FDR said, deregulation is, uh, well, he said regulations defang the fat cats. You have to defang the monster. Well, it's like this whole thing when you take a country, how do you want to run the country? Everybody's talking about getting rid of the middle man in Ukraine, right? The middle man's the backbone of the economy. For Ukraine. Well, even the U.S. And when you think about think small about businesses. If we, if we don't let... up, oh, I'm going off the subject. No, 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 that's okay. No, what I'm saying is uh, it's an economics point of view. I mean, who is the true consumer of the United States? Who's the backbone? Who, who provides most of the jobs? Small businesses, right? Well, you got to be careful with that. It's, it, it is small business, runs the country right now. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Small businesses, entrepreneurs, right? The small mom and pop stores. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much holding it together right The now. corporations have the jobs outsourced. You know, so... Uh, I tend to agree with you there. You know, but as far as the cars go... The little guys are still holding together yeah. by a fine thread. <laughs> well, there it's an it's an endangered species, the middle class. It's still very difficult to save. It's still very difficult to invest, in my opinion. Yeah. Unless you've already got the money there to do it. Well, they have they have the tax burden. Number one, unfortunately, they have the tax burden all the way around. You know, yeah, uh, these proper. Scams, these scams with the automotive industry are going to keep happening because they yeah. need a lot of money right now to put out for the insurances. And the, uh, it, People are going to get taken. Yeah. If you to find an honest mechanic is a very rare thing. Good luck. And and and, and, they're, and they're, like you said, they're not they're not being brought up within anymore like they used to in America. Yeah. No, they're not. So we'll see what happens. Yet you have all these other companies that laid off Detroit, Michigan, and all these people just living off the system. And they're all great, or once great line mechanics, you know? Sure. Well, robotics did replace a lot of people. Sure. I mean, uh, and rightfully so. I mean, a robotic doesn't come in, doesn't start work uh, with a hangover or drunk or, you know, or high or uh, robots don't get tired. They're usually perfect, except for performing surgery. They did try robotics in surgery, and it didn't quite work. They had complications because you need the dexterity. 
Yeah. You, need, you need dexterity to operate on somebody. Yeah. Okay. What the, what the fabulous Phil. what the fabulous Phil uh, was we were discussing aside from aside from you know finding a, a good honest mechanic is very rare and, uh, well, and let me ask you one thing how do you know who to trust really how do you know who's being honest with you could be a relative he could be dishonest as hell too how do you really know you could have a friend don't who's say he's my uncle he's my cousin yeah. or whatever you just don't the know. typical topic that bill has mentioned last week when we were discussing stuff was don't talk to strangers and um, he made a great point yeah well everybody's, that's connected with my other rant everybody's a stranger we're all strangers well, we the, didn't we get asked him, i asked somebody do you have any friends well yeah why is it what were they before they became your friends Strangers. Everybody starts off as a stranger. You know, why is the FBI study? I said, would you please re repeat the current FBI study to me? They were like, what are you talking about? I said, 90 plus percent of all rapes and murders are committed by a family, friend, and or relative. What am I... Why do you call Copeland in trouble? You're calling a stranger. He's a stranger. You're being attacked. A stranger comes to your aid. Good Samaritan. Are you going to say, stop? Call my uncle so-and-so. A good Samaritan so this, is a stranger. This teaching our kids don't talk to strangers is the most stupid thing you could do. Not all strangers are bad. Yes, some are. The vast majority are not. Get that through your thick heads, everybody. And, and, and as far as the, the women no. saying, well, I don't you know. You come like that when you say it like that. Yeah. Well, as far as, far as no. like, like a lot of women would say, uh, they'll say, well, I don't know you. I don't know you. Well, how do you get to know a person? Let me ask you they all, they're, all, they're not going to rape. Let me interrupt that real quick. Yeah. Do you ever really know anybody? Even your spouse. Everybody has secrets and pasts. Right. Do you right. ever know one, anyone one hundred percent? So what do you mean? I don't know you. What do you mean by that? Well, things could change. You know? Like this, a, ma a marriage. My mother had a great friend down in Texas. Uh, this guy was married, her, two, her, her good friend, blah, 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 had two wonderful children. They found him murdered in a, in a motel by his gay lover. And she had no idea that... The wife had no clue. So do you ever really know anyone totally? No. If you do or That's think you do, if you really oh, come on, you know how many people don't even know how many... That's true. You know, how many people have been cheated upon? My one buddy was a producer for a mate, one of the major three, top three networks. And John told me, he's divorced now, he found out his wife was having an affair for 22 years. Wow. I said, where the hell were you? You didn't see signs? Nothing? No signs. 22, oh, come on. You can't be that naive. Yeah, you can't. No, no. There's, there's always going to be a little something. A little something. something 22 you can't years. Properly. 22 forget, years. You've got to sleep at night. You right. Got yeah, something's wrong. Like, like in other words, if you're with a partner for that long, you've got to know something. Jimmy, 22 wrong. years. Come on, boy. Well, facial you expression, a giveaway, that. you can't be poking uh, face. A change of, of normal behavior, like let's say uh, the husband changes his behavior and all of a sudden she's showered with roses and gifts and, and jewelry and everything. Think about how long 22 years ago. He's guilty about something, he's trying to cover up for, cover up for something. John, John, sadly, he's a good friend of mine. He's guilty of ignorance. <laughs> It is. How, you not something How could you not notice on, changes on, in a relationship? Man. That's insane. But you know, I do notice what you were saying about motor vehicles. I do notice that as time goes by, people's behavior, people are starting to behave more and more like assholes as the years go by. No sense of humor, no friendliness, and just a miserable negativity. Well, how many about times do you each walk by somebody coming in or out of here or any place, anywhere? and they'll walk straight ahead. They're scared to death or rude. Either way, it's not a good effect. No. They'll look you in the eye. But I meet so many, but I do meet so many no, wonderful people. Like very, a lack of, no, but, but I meet. Want to try to do. Look at somebody say, hi, good morning. I talk, Jimmy knows, I talk to everybody. I get kids coming up to me. Uh, talk, what are you afraid of? I'm not here, I'm not out here having a cigarette waiting for you to come so I can rape you. I just said hi. Good morning. 
I mean, am I the bad guy? Because I said, good morning. Yeah, don't. But I've got to be honest, I have met extremely mo- majority wonderful people. Yes. You get a few, well, they're so scared to talk to somebody, you know, and uh, I don't know why, but uh, I don't know why, because to know me is to love me. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't, uh, as far as the ladies go, don't flatter yourself to think that every man is trying to get in your pants and, and rape well, you. Well, how many times did I turn girls down, as you know? Yes. I said, no, I'm just not in the mood tonight. I mean, he knows my story when I'm at the Sheraton, used to be the Sheraton, <coughs> Sheraton up here, an extremely high-priced call girls, not prostitutes, call girls. He come up in these big cars, full like mink coats. So I'm talking to this beautiful blonde one night. She goes, You know what I am? I said, No. She says, I'm a call girl. I said, No. Oh. No. She says, I want to take you upstairs and do you for free. I looked at her, I chuckled, and I said, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not that kind of a guy. <laughs> Which is very different from yeah. the way most men would react. Everybody else was like, are you nuts? Oh, fellas, come you on. had it made in the shade, Billy. Said, yeah, nah, they nah, said, yeah, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why aren't you doing that? Usually that's when it's the worst experience. <laughs> it's nothing for nothing. But no, you know what it is? When you, when you, trap, no, when and you it jump. wasn't like a natural thing, like maybe he's used to it. No, when he's you, grooming or dating or when you being jump, romantic. When you jump for it, you know, it's, it's always the wrong moment. You're, you're it's just, always the wrong you're moment. The if, if only we did, always. if only we had the right. wisdom and the minds we have now back then. I always used to I say that. Did. I always say that for myself. I did. I read Playboy cover to cover from when I was five years so old. So you were like street smart, shrewd kid. Body language you could tell if someone was drinking. If a girl touches your arm, what she's she talking to you. you. If she touched you. If they, body language. If just, just there's so many things. Like 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 this. This. Yes. Eye contact. They, drink, I, they just ignored you. Eye contact is very important. And then we were always told, growing up, there's more fish in the sea. And you're outnumbered in the tri-state area five to one back in the 70s. That was outnumbered, yeah. Yeah, it was five to one. So why are they so why are they so cocky? You were cutting a fish hatchery, though. There were five women to every guy in the tri-state area. Yeah, but why? They, but why are they still say numbers though? It doesn't but, matter. But why are they always? That makes it no, better for you. Odds wise, no, it's just numbers. Yeah, but that's that's, that's based on logic. But they're still standoffish. Yeah, you're gonna get turned off. Yeah, you're gonna. Um, get, I mean, the, what they, is it called? Uh, they don't. Ego is gonna go flat, and yeah, there are gonna be ones that you wanted to go. Yeah, but with, and you never could. Is that what you mean? But if no, if you're dealing, if, what you're talking about is like supply and demand. Yeah, Acor- numbers don't matter. I according didn't mean to, to go that route, according to say, what we're trying to analyze. It and make it scientific. Yeah. It's going to be a package, it's not just a guy and a girl. Five to one, ten, it doesn't matter. A girl looks for the package, guy looks for the package. Some guys are desperate, some women are desperate. Well, it's just like if they're not going to even want you either. Don't forget, if the pa- if that part well, is. Well, that's what there. I mean. So the numbers five to one, ten to one don't matter. Love is there, the numbers don't matter. matter. Yeah, be a thousand Th- these are individuals you're thinking of. It, it, it's all about. different mindset. You'll be the one guy that they want out of a thousand to one. You mindset. Be the one guy I had they a friend want. that he was 250 pounds overweight. He got more women than anybody. Yeah, yeah so he was always broke. He was a big. He was always broke. So she was a big dude. So sheer. Put on the weight. You just like no. So so sheer numbers. I'm serious. I've seen a lot of women and like big dudes. You know, certain majority, certain though. ethnic groups, certain ethnic you know. groups. Listen, guys. Certain well, ethnic groups, like 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 I'm, I'm like the time. certain that. Hispanic cultures, like Mexico, they like guys that are husky, that are, have some ec- extra weight. They they're into the the size, the the, the size of the woman's butt. You know. I don't the, like the, I don't like No, I'm saying it's cu- culture has a lot to do with. from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. He said, "Ob preferences." I get you down there. You'd own the beach. He goes, they would eat you alive. They'd love you. I said, oh, Leo, thank you. Right, because you have a, a athletic uh, gluteus maximus? Everything, guy. Uh, well, just, just up here, the way you conduct yourself. I used to get guys when I was in the shirt one night, a number of nights, and they weren't gay. <laughs> because they came up and they said, listen, I'm not gay. They said, I just wanted to tell you, you're not like any of the other guys in here. You're very smooth. You're you don't not, have to whisper. You're not a green OG. Is that you're smooth. So I just had to tell you that. And I got that more times than you can imagine. That's why I met all of you. So you're, he's Billy's the original Dos Equis man, the guy that's on the beer commercial, the most interesting man alive. You're the real life Dos Equis. Stay, stay thirsty, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> stay thirsty. They're all using it. Yeah, he They're is. They're all using the Dos Equis. The NFL's even using it. But, but he is, in, in real life, most interesting, interesting man alive. Man in the world.
get rid of the bowl before you get your ass hey. sacked. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks his coffee without a lid. Right. He doesn't use a straw. Real men don't use right. straws in their any drink. The shoe, do hop, real the shoes hop onto his Do real men themselves. order? <laughs> do real men when order? He walks the concrete uh, has do, more extra cracks. They do, don't break their. He doesn't have back. to do laundry because his clothing doesn't get dirty. <laughs> do, do real men or order <laughs> cafe uh, buffanabli? The oh, real. Yeah. I'm trying to get in a word in edgewise oh, here. Use Listen. different words. Come on. The man. real men order uh, cafe lattes and cappuccinos. What's a latte? A latte. Latte. Real men do anything they want. That's true. You know, a real latte. man is not afraid to do anything. Latte is like latissimus dorsi. The, real man, the, the back used to be muscles. Real men don't eat quiche. Real men eat quiche you, you and eat anything they want. Anything they want. You go back to the Scottish and the Irish who started it all here in America. In my opinion, I wish we had another wave on the kick ass. What do you do? What's your ethnic background? Truly warriors. Well, you know the the Appalachian people, the Appalachian yeah, the whites people in West Virginia. Same. Yeah, those, they're over mostly over they're, they're, Irish they're, they're, they're they're Irish Scottish uh, Scottish descent, you know, mostly predominantly. And then there's Germans came, they went to Pennsylvania. But once you're in the family, you're in the family. <coughs> yes. That's what I'm getting at. They didn't. They didn't. Like make you an offer you can't. No, they don't abandon. Uh, you're not a. Um, it wasn't like all the other mobs groups. Your Italian mob. Your, Everybody, mom. Everybody's out for themselves. Yes. Yeah. It's another animal today. What I'm getting at, I would love to see. They're never coming here. They're never going to migrate here. Right? They're having, they have unity. Yes, it's family. What I'm getting at, it's old world family. It's old world, yes. Old school. Yeah. And, now, and warriors. Without them, we wouldn't have won half the freaking wars this country. Did you know they defeated... You don't the, mess with fighting. More at. You don't fight, you don't mess with the... They got the longest, probably the longest history of warrior, more than the Spartans. Everybody the, said, no, oh, the, the Spartans. Vikings, the Vikings. Well, well, that's, well, don't worry. The Norwegian, Scottish, and Irish they are all in the same net. Did every, you know... The, the Norwegians were top two. Did you yeah. know that they... Right. Well, they used, they used the fjords as their, as their fortress, the, uh, the, the mountains around the fjords. You know, there, there were inlets. Yeah. But you have a girl named Fiora. Fjords? Yes, yeah. a couple of fjords. Have you driven a fjord lately? <laughs> have you driven a fjord? <laughs> <laughs> there no. you go. Do you know the Appalachians the defeated, defeated the Red Coats single-handedly? They, they used guerrilla tactics like the Indian-style fighting. Well, they said the design of their long ships were like unlike anything they'd ever seen. Uh, that's period. So, Again, the Vikings never were met, phenomenal I've fighters. Never met, well, that whole northern region, yeah. maybe it's because of where they live, that toughness. There's, there's no comparison. Yeah, but it took a lot of, it took a lot of guts to. No, if everybody else was laid back, you had they went but, to the Mediterranean, the French, you know, they were chachi chachi. The what Burner, I'm saying is just the toughness. Well, it took the north. It took, a, it took a lot of guts to you know, travel. Rainy days every day. It takes a lot of guts to make a tennis racket. It took a lot of uh, as for, about that, for the right? half a dozen time. It took a lot of guts. It said "Abba Fangul," as they say in Italian. That is right. It took a lot of guts to travel you know, across. Okay. You know what? You guys are are great, right, but man. you guys, you, you know, you're like a uh, little a little courtesy, a little, a little sh show courtesy. With it took camera. a lot of guts to travel the Atlantic Ocean in a little boat. Little they boat. weren't that big. What? A Viking ship. No, they were that long. No, they're not. Yeah, they were. They were very long. I saw the size of a, of a, of a British man, an English man of they war. Were, they they were weren't that big. They had large either. You know, just yesterday. They were yeah, they some of the, the biggest boats of their time. Wars. Yeah. yeah, they did some pretty. Big they did some big, big long boats. They, they made towers. They, they were, were the first long, one to do long, like long a boats. Tower. And with the ramming front too, and they, they were had the first. They had a special front. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, to, to shear the bow of the boat. Yeah. To when it, sink yeah. it. When it comes. When it comes. Absolutely right. The and they also had the the, the, the uh, boat thing under the water. So when you hit the other boat, it would fill with water and go down. Yes. When it comes to the middle of the ocean, there is no. Yeah. When it comes to the middle of the ocean. Oh, they had all the forging methods of their sword. When it comes to the middle of the ocean, there is no big boat, man. There is no big boat. They made it. They made it everywhere. If, if you're in a cruise ship and there's a big storm comes. Yeah, yes, there's a big storm, but there's made it through some of the big storms I mean, back in that area. Relatively. I'm sure they lost their people, too. But then others lose their people, some don't. Some make it through, which is why tactics come head into the wave when it's coming a big one. They go up and over, ride it. Most people not sit around. They sucked it up. 
too. They dealt with it. Yeah, I mean, we just can't deal with it. Nothing. These guys are a bunch of mink Look at the wrong bottom line, that's what it looks like. Spending our money. Seasickness. I mean, uh, uh, to a Viking? The bottom line is what I said. What's a billion dollars going to do for Ukraine? Quite a bit. And you know, people hungry and starving. You know, every well, dollar much, helps. Every, well, when it comes get, to food. Get, if you get every major brand out there, or every one of these stopping shops to donate for the cause of Ukraine, you would probably approach a billion dollars of food, correct or not? If you did a fun drive tomorrow, yeah, well, you across the nation, every different train. And you put it on a ship and every you brought train, it to the yeah. Baltic Sea or wherever. But you have to make sure it, it was distributed properly. Where you airdrop uh, messages to the Russian people. Yeah. Because sooner or later, they're going to need a food line. Is the standoff. But you've got to make sure, like in other countries, the money, money or the products don't disappear. You got this standoff and this standoff. But look at look at the media just stirring. up. Philly, look at the African nations. Backpacks sent from the UN are being worn by the by the warlord gang personnel. So it never got distributed to the proper people. You've got to make sure those funds get to the proper people. Corruption, they intercepted the uh, So the how do you make sure that happens? Money. Well, that's what these people how do you make the money about? distributed? Their biggest the food. is the corruption. Wake up, America. How do you stop the corruption? I don't know. That's the answer, though. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. answer. I'd, rather, I'd rather be like Kerry and go, you I gotta don't stop know. The corruption. You know what? Here's how you got to do it. You all have to sit down and get negotiated. It. It's going to cost them a fortune to feed this army now that they got in there. Just like it always costs us a billion, what, a billion a day to feed well, our bottom army? bottom line, too, is they have land. You know, just sitting there barren. What about war profits? They war want pro their land back. Teach That's them it. how to grow things on their own soil. What about war profiteering, too? That, that, that's corruption in, in war. Everything. It's not... Russia's in there. They want their land back, and they're not leaving. Things aren't getting distributed properly. That's the problem. Yeah. And I can guarantee this thing, it may escalate, but there's going to be some dead bodies on the ground. Oh, definitely. I hope not. Is these are but I just innocent just, and good people. And they don't, are. Get, don't get me wrong, the it's Russians crazy. the Russians are a wonderful people. They are too. I know a lot of them. They are wonderful people. And, and so nobody wins, nobody loses here. You want right. things to settle down. They care. You don't want to, the we don't want to cry, like we don't want to cry, we beat you, we push you back. They don't want that with us. Let's settle things down, people, okay? Let's calm things down here a little bit. The cooler minds prevail, as they say. That's what it really comes down to. You got to have talks. He was pretty loving. Uh, when he, when, you know, Kerry was. You know what his speech was. Let's keep it diplomatic. Let's keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And get Putman on the same table. Yeah. He doesn't have to walk around like a general. He's policing right now. They I think I think Putin probably was having some second thoughts here, a little behind the scenes. And I think he wants to know how he can really. Hey, I want to get out of this, but. It's going to like make me look weak if I do. He doesn't really know what to do at this point. So I don't think he's that bad a person, no, personally. he's not that bad. I don't dislike the guy. I don't think he's like that. I hope we I think... Uh, Here we go again with how do you judge a book by its cover? Well, you're going to sit down and talk to him with the man in the eye and talk. you got to open up some pages. Yeah, let's... What do you want? What do you... Let's talk here. Yeah. And they don't talk. We should have him for dinner every day. We should invite him to some Well, just like how many times uh, from Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, been back and forth over here almost every month or two. Keep your enemies He's always close. here. And your, no, your, your friend's close and your enemy's closer. Yeah, he's close. Thank yeah, you, God, you got him you on can, there. You can really screw up a saying. Well, I could screw up a... Yeah. And and then, look at Netanyahu. And life, he's been here all the time. He's been here how many times, right, Philly? I don't think you can suck the chrome off the bumper, that guy. No. You <laughs> know what? I, I got a question. I got a question. Question for you. You're not filming him at all, though. I've I've had this. He's I've pretty, I've been makeup. filming him a lot. Look at his makeup. But no, no, we have to promote the great no, man God. We yes, we do. No. If you got a call, would you go? If you got uh, somebody wanted to hire you and fly you out somewhere, would you go? Well, then there you go. You have a great mind with a great vocabulary. Thank you. I'll help you. But he can't be bashful. I will guide you with my wisdom, number one. Exactly. Well, if you got wisdom, we you might as well put you. Scotty, Scotty, two, two to beam up. The time that I had off and the business information that he gave me about some things that he did. In his yeah, life. sure, of course. The deals that were meant on the table are similar to what they're going to go through over in Ukraine. It's the exact same process. Right. They're going to start bottom up. They need to vote in 90 days. Well, well the bottom line here is, is it 90 really days is a long time. But it's a lot easier. If they look you in the eye and you talk and they, for some reason, like you and have faith in you yeah, and you see that you're a real person, 
Hey, you're not BSing. That's what got me in, in every door we tried when Ray and, Ray and I were doing Super Deck. It opened more doors for us. Why do all the rap groups, which are, you know, t tough, that were leaving that record label, when, when Alan and everybody came in and said, we've got a, when they said, we've got a problem. the president keeps getting in front of a classroom and not getting his gosh darn plane and going to meet Putin tomorrow, and get off your gosh darn horse because actions speak louder than right. words. But what if Putin came in and said, I'll only talk to Billy. Invite him over I'd for I'd be dinner. there for him. Invite him over for Same dinner. with the rat Don't sit there and, 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 and condone Russia and all this already. Right off the bat, you don't have the facts. You have your flask in that cup, didn't you? <laughs> Took it off. You're getting wound up, kid. Well, the person. Yeah, but if they trust you and they like you, right. it opens doors. Trust it can speak good. volumes. All the education, all the money in the world can't happen. be trusted. Well, the person that you know, got removed like from you. office, you know? the person that got Somewhere, removed the from the Ukraine was real tight with the, yeah, with the was, Russians. He's in Russia now. Yeah. He was an ally anyway. You know how much your money he took, or so far, so that we know That's of? why the Ukraine people. Do you know how much? No. Do you? I'm not, I'm sure he So far that we know of, $12 billion. $12 billion? Which Trump. means there's probably more. He's in on the whole thing. I guarantee you, oh, yeah. get to the bottom line, this is a uh, conspiracy coup. They want their land back. It didn't work for 20 years, so now they want their land back. It's a very fertile land. If you look at the history, Stalin wanted it, Hitler wanted it. You know, but look, look at who your name is, Stalin. Look Hitler, at the strategic Lenin. location of it. It's yeah. The separation. Well, everything from Russia, the pipeline goes right through the right Ukraine. Through Ukraine. So, uh, and if they just go, hey, let's shut the valves off, Europe is fucked and we're fucked. Excuse my language. There are other ways. Yeah. There always will be. If we put sanctions on them, we are going to have the worst economy. We you think it's bad now? They control ninety percent of the world's oil, Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Did no, you know no, that? no. We're the biggest. We are the biggest. U.S. is. No, they yeah, control are. it. They control all no, the shipping No, we have the biggest lanes. ashes everywhere. We will be the number one supplier of oil in one to two years, they say. There's no way we're going to supply Europe if they shut those valves. There's if they no want way. it, we can give it. We have caches and deals with Mexico and Canada, too, and plus what's in the U.S. alone. And look at look what's happening in Texas recently. We don't have enough truck drivers. We don't have we'll enough. We'll get them. But we'll look what's happened in Texas recently. How. In Texas, that one strip of 424 miles has created overnight millionaires and some millionaires. Oh, yeah, I believe that. That strip of oil, yeah. they didn't know. They said, we were dirt poor. Now we're, we can buy anything we Texas want. Truman, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. They found these hidden caches because of new technology. They can see deeper the without, cool. without, yeah. They're the happiest people right now. Oh, they the said, code. we're getting checks in the mail every month for millions of dollars. And they were in trouble for losing their home, their land, or whatever. Now I hope they, you're right. I hope we can become you know, self-sufficient so, uh, because if Russia decides to turn it the other yeah. way, and say, okay, you're doing that, we're screwing you. And you're talking about oil, not fracking and destroying destroying America's countryside. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the oil How much methods say are fracking, too, and destroying that, things. Some are, Russia's some are. Russia's threatening to close the doors to the U.S. if this all goes down. No, I think Russia needs us just like we need them, too. He's saying he can close, he can just go, see you later. Yeah, but is that smart? Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think no. it is. His people don't want that, the world doesn't want that, we don't want that. It's all important to everybody. Come on, we're the I two biggest powers in the planet. I think you just invite him over to a Brooklyn Net game and he'll be fine. I say go to McDonald's. Brooklyn, don't go to McDonald's. With, come with me. Oh, yeah, no, Brighton, Brighton, Brighton Beach. Don't, Put it on Facebook. You know what I would tell go them? To McDonald's. We'll I, fly you here. I would say don't bring any security with you. He goes, yeah. what if they see me? Walk I said, I'll tell you. Worth, I would tell people you were one of those agencies that rents lookalikes of celebrities. So people say, is that Putin? I said, no. He's a celebrity lookalike. Bill, you your, can first, go move, walk your first move on the phone. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're <laughs> dating. You know, that's a bit of a risk you're going in there. Are you going to police? Yeah, I'm on the phone with you now for 90 minutes. He's on the phone with you for 90 minutes. Then bam, they're there. They're in the sea, they're, they got that whole little section now. We're sending over ships too, though, but I want to know his wife. No, 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 I don't say that. Yeah. We're sending our Navy over there now. Yeah, but it's sort of nothing. I thought the missile they launched today in Russia was a test. That's all that was. They admitted it. There was a scheduled test from months ago. Right, they have two military bases. They can do all their yeah, things they want. But my, but thing is, my big thing is, why did Russia also send ships four or five days ago into Cuba? Why are they over here? Why are they in Cuba? They're in Cuba right now. Yeah, why? Because they've always had missile bases there. No, but why did they just now? We, we It hasn't been reported. They sent ships in years or recently, in a long time. Why did they just recently send ships Russia to Cuba? Russia and China. So. 
could pretty much break the frame. No, they couldn't. If it came down to nuclear or whatever, and, and missed not. No, economically, like, economically, like economically, all the money we owe China. right now, they could cripple this country. Uh, easily. I don't easily. know. Without, without firing a shot. Look at all the loans. Easily. I don't know. Look at all the loans they gave the United easily. States. We only have $30 billion in Russia. That's it. We, I think we got we have methods. We got Procter and Gamble, GE, right. Boeing. Well, look how much Coca Cola. Who else we got in Russia? McDonald's. Well, look how much. Uh, how, how much? much uh, uh, how much? Look, you couldn't. look at how much uh, oh, Treasury right back. Treasury bills. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, U.S. Treasuries that China probably owns. You know. Scary time. Sure. You feel like I'm leaving it. Okay. No, it ain't going to take long. All right, uh, guys, gentlemen, fabulous Phil and William H. Moore. You're not sure again. No, we no. You're a man, God, and you got to be out in cyberspace. Uh, rolling. I action. I um I have an idea that will help feed the homeless. You have every school in America add a new course. Victory Gardens have a have a fruit and vegetable an herbal garden on school grounds in every school teaching the kids how to how to raise crops on a small That's level. A lot are doing that, aren't they? Yes. And, well, how come I don't drive around seeing the Victory Gardens uh, right now? How at many the schools? schools have you gone into and inspect it and you don't know where the garden might There's be? no Victory Gardens out there, sir. Oh. There's not no Victory Gardens. Please. And have and plant every park in America, plant fruit trees, have a fruit orchard and take all this produce and give it to the soup kitchens to feed the homeless. Because a simple McDonald's like this one can would rather throw out than feed the soup kitchens too. Well, they all throw. Uh, there's we'll another problem. There's you know, another thing. you know what they do. In the the stop shop, no. You know what? You know, you know the ca Home Depot. Go look yeah. at you know the casinos. You, see waste? you know the casino. You know the casinos in Las Vegas. They don't donate it to the soup kitchen. The, the food that gets mushy, they give it. To, they sell it to the pig farmers in Nevada. To slap the hogs. Is that why you're flying out there every once in a month? You could, you could set why you up to Vegas. and you could create a lot of jobs, and you're probably right for minimum wage. No, donate. Donate. The, it, have the kids grow the produce and just simply donate it to the soup kitchen. Why is it what makes sense most people don't want to do? I don't understand that. Exactly what Bill you know, said. It, it makes sense. If it well, makes too much sense, well, it's never going to be done. Do it never gets done. Never. Feed, feed people. That's too easy. Feed That's people easy with perfectly solution. good food. We need to sell this thing. No, let's throw it out. Throw it out. I don't understand the thinking. Well, the, the group in, in, in San Francisco goes around and looks outside of restaurants and confiscates food that's still edible. They throw out a lot of good food, these restaurants. You think they're throwing out any pot in Colorado? No. No, not at all. Need I say more? Why can't that be tomato plants or corn or fruit plants? Why is pot more volatile than feeding the world? And it's the most important cultivized crop known to man. Why do we still most have versatile? Too? 38 million people starving worldwide. Why do we have 2.6 million? Three million. Oh, there's more. Than that. Oh, but it's higher. Than that. Probably is higher. You know? Probably is. I mean, I didn't count Russia or China. Right, correct. I mean, right, fellas, I'm sure I China has run, 22 okay? million by yes. itself. Good. Let me know what happens later with you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Thank you for, for joining us All for right. this week's progressive discussion. Bye-bye. As he walks away. See you later, Bill. This has been a Megalife 21 production. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises. Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you, well, lost, you lost another, another argument, argument with the conservative, conservative right-wing right Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. you. He, screamed he screamed and yelled. yelled. He brought he out the Bible. Bible. He thumped it. it. He quoted scripture, scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts, nothing but facts, and you expected that that would uh, that would make you look good, that would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need.
every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censor. That's all you need. Read it and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Okay, we are back th and thank you very much William H. Moore of the third for a, uh, and of course the fabulous Phil. M mustn't forget him. Thank you gentlemen for uh, a great visit, great show with you too. Um, was very invigorating to, to say the least. Very, very, vigor, in, very invigorating indeed. And of course, our commercial, you heard it, our promo. Uh, the, best, the very best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored. That's the way you join us. So go there now and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. Um, now we return to our readings. Uh, this Saturday afternoon, uh, March 8th, right? 2014. 
<coughs> the World Health Organization says your daily sugar intake should be no more than 5% of your daily caloric intake, about 6 teaspoons. Half of what the agency previously recommended, according to new draft guidelines published on Wednesday. After review of about 9,000 studies, mm -hmm. WHO's expert panel says dropping sugar intake to that level will combat obesity and cavities. That includes sugars added to foods, those present in honey, syrups, and fruit juices but not those incurring, occurring naturally in fruits. Okay. Added sugar is hidden in all kinds of processed foods. A tablespoon of ketchup has about one teaspoon of sugar. There's a lot of hidden sugars out there, people. A Quaker chewy granola bar with chocolate chips has almost two. <laughs> a single cup of apple juice or a container of Yoplait's original strawberry yogurt would take up your entire recommended daily allowance. Really? You mean one eight yeah. ounce cup of Yoplait? That's right. Well, unless it's six ounce. Now. Wow. I have a young lady. Yeah. Who I mentor or try to. Try to is more like it. And <laughs> she believes that she can replace the probiotics after antibiotics by eating a yogurt. It sounds like something her medical doctor or dietitian would tell her. Oh, no, no, don't buy a bottle of uh, probiotics. probiotics from uh, the health food store. No, just eat yogurt from the supermarket. First of all, the probiotic count is, is very low, if any, and it only has, if you're lucky, it only has acidophilus, uh, lactobacillus acidophilus, and probiotics is a whole spectrum a whole family of probiotics and in your body not just acidophilus if the yogurt has been pasteurized nothing then you have nothing there and the same thing goes for for fruit juices if you, the apple juice is well it is pasteurized if it's from the market if the apple juice is uh, pasteurized there's no live enzymes as many nutrients are killed mm -hmm. you know so, uh, now, I don't know if there are, except, the, uh, you know, you buy them locally or something like that, on pasteurized lo uh, yogurts. Not commercially, I do not think. Uh, if, so. you, uh, if you buy a yogurt... From some mom and pop. No, you know what you do? It start, it's, it's available in supermarkets now. If you buy Stonyfield organic yogurt from Vermont, and this contains full spectrum probiotics. When you read it, it's got the whole family in it. But is it pasteurized? No, because oh, 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 oh! You're a smart cookie. Oh! It's. It, I know it's not homogenized because the fat That's is on mean. is at the top. That doesn't mean anything. The not the, here. But, but pasteurization might be the federal law. That's what I'm saying. And if it's pasteurized... Commercially, I think they all are pasteurized. But if you go to some Greek mom and pop or something, maybe you can get one that is not pasteurized. But the, sold commercially, I don't think so. There's a Middle Eastern store uh, called Sahara near me that has many imported um, yogurts and kefirs that yeah. are like... Ask them. Heavy duty yogurt, man. I mean, it's like sour cream. It's so thick. Mm. You know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. A study published last month in JAMA, the 
Journal of the American Medical Association. By the way, isn't it strange? Conservatives dislike unions. Yeah. Why don't they dislike the Journal, uh, you know, the American Medical Association? The AMA? It's a union. It's a union. It's a union. It's a union that's in bed with Big Pharma. Maybe yeah. that's why they love them. Because oh. they're getting the old mammo. They're getting the palms greased from, oh. big, from big Pharma. I see. And the AMA is probably controlled by Big Pharma, too. You know, I mean, uh, hey, I mentioned uh, a couple natural products to my primary care physician, the in internal medicine doctor, and he immediately scoffed at it and says, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy that. I stuff. don't deal with that crap. Yeah, I don't buy that. Oh, so I guess he only deals with pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A whopping 71.4% of American adults get more than 10% of their calories from sugar. Well, what, what upset me, I'm glad you, you read that because uh, I was watching um, the local news uh, during prime time and uh, they were talking about um, obesity and overweight and uh, the best way to lose weight and so on and so forth and they mentioned um, they didn't mention anything about uh, sugar or carbohydrate counting they didn't mention anything about going into <coughs> ketosis um, they all they mentioned was uh, portion control calories in calories out mm -hmm. and of course aerobics according to these people are, is the best way to lose weight and that's not true because strength training is much better because uh, the more muscle you have on your body the higher your metabolism is mm -hmm. because a pound of muscle burns 50 calories a day just to exist and fat just lies and there. fat just lies there now it takes 3500 extra calories to, to to gain one pound of fat a year well one pound of fat on your body period requires 3500 calories of excess mm -hmm. calories so in order to burn 3500 calories doing aerobics that's a lot of aerobics and then you'll be hungrier right so they they so say you'll eat more so the news people the major network news people they right away they go to the uh, medical doctors and the american Dietet dietetic association and to the bariatric physician the bariatric medical doctor who is a drug pusher that specializes in weight loss and they don't mention anything about raising the metabolism uh, naturally they don't mention uh, anything about strength training they don't mention anything about uh, thyroid about sugar the dangers of sugar they just say calorie portion control like weight watches you know weight watches tells you you can eat uh, sugary snacks you just can't have that many of them well you shouldn't be having the sugary snacks to begin with mm. you know you shouldn't you should be having nuts and seeds and uh, and pork rinds or you know well nuts and seeds let's say <clears throat> they don't mention anything about like what the uh, legendary nutritionists used to talk about with Carlton Fredericks and Robert Atkins Richard Passwater about the real causes of uh, obesity and uh, excess body fat no they just they just uh, take what the official dumb says. Official dumb says calorie restriction. That doesn't stabilize blood sugar. They demonize fats. That's what I was thinking about before. All they, fats. They demonize all fats. Yeah. And having essential fatty acids in your in your diet and your body is the way you stabilize your blood sugar, mm -hmm. so you don't feel hungry. So. That's all I have to say. Countering the notion that Mormons believe they will someday inherit their own planets. The planet Mormon? 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has issued a statement on becoming like God. Really? That tries to put distance between official church teaching and the age-old notion. The article, newly posted on the church's website, attempts to explain complex theology that church officials believe has been overly simplified into inaccurate caricatures. Just as heaven is often depicted as people sitting on clouds or strumming harps, mm -hmm. Latter-day Saints doctrine of exaltation is often similarly reduced in media to a cartoonish image of people receiving their own planets. Wow, what an imagination they have, the Mormons. Wow. Uh, that is in the Bible. About planets? Yeah. Uh, About a, God beings. Does it say planets? God beings going out into the universe to begin the experiment all over again. Yeah, but does it mention other worlds? It, it's a universe out there. Going out into the universe, which must mean other worlds. Yes. It doesn't say... Doing the experiment over again. But what about the, um, the world tomorrow? What about the new... new uh, that's only for the Earth. The new remodeled planet Earth. That's only for the Earth. Revelation 22. Then, after the millennium, God the Father himself will bring his throne to the Earth, which will become the headquarters of the universe. Oh, so when that, when that, um, when that building, magnificent building with gemstones and, and its own light and when that, when that descends to Jerusalem, this is after the thousand year rule? Yep. And, and this is of course after the tribulation and, and the, uh, the great white throne judgment. Yep. Okay. One of the recent depictions occurs in the Tony winning musical, The Book of Mormon, which includes a song called, I Believe. Yeah, that, it, it's done, it's the, the musical is done by the writers of South Park. That declares God's plan involves me getting my own planet in the afterlife. Well, how about that? They, they actually interpret it correctly. Incorrectly. The they only have an inkling of it. Oh, an inkling, yeah. Yeah, an inkling of it. They got. They should listen to David C. Pack and, and William uh, J. Eisenman, Doctor D Doctor of Divinity. It's not the first time the Church has tried to distance itself from the planet notion, which is often used by critics of Mormonism to discredit the faith. This idea is not taught in Latter Day Saint scripture, nor is it a doctrine of the Church. According to the church's online Mormonism 101 feature, this misunderstanding stems from speculative comments unreflective of scriptural doctrine. Mormons relate exaltation in the afterlife to their here and now experiences of family and community life. They see the seeds of Godhood through the joy of raising children, serving others, and appreciating the universe's beauty. Church members imagine exaltation less through images of what they will get and more through the relationships they have now and how those relationships might be purified and elevated. The LDS Church, almost LSD, <laughs> the LDS Church, the statement notes that Mormon beliefs about human divinity have long <coughs> differed from traditional Christian views. 
but it points to several biblical verses that support its interpretation, such as Jesus' command that his disciples should be perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. What the hell that has to do with planets, I have no idea. Latter-day Saints see these scriptures as straightforward expressions of humanity's divine nature and potential. The statement says, noting, that many other Christians read the same passages far more metaphorically. They should just read it and interpret it as it is not you know make up their own uh, yeah but there are certain there are some things there are some things that they can't understand there are some things that if you read the Bible a hundred years ago you would not understand because certain things took place only recently that are in the Bible it's uh, prophecy okay. like 90 per, uh, 30 percent of the Bible is prophecy and 90 percent of it is for the latter days 90%, 90 for the latter days? For the latter days. Oh, okay. My 13-year-old daughter, Lizzie, continues to talk to a 14-year-old boy who is very controlling and abusive to her. Break him up, break him up. I made her stop talking to him, took away her cell phone privileges, and tried to show her how wrong he was for her. I tell his parents to keep him the hell away from the, the do my daughter, or else. And she was going to wind up very hurt. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be somebody hurt if, it was in my, if, if I was in charge. After recently giving her the cell phone back, I learned last night that Lizzie has been talking to him and lying to me about it. I knew it. Because uh, uh, women, they like the uh, the bad boy image. They mm. like the abuse. They, they like to, they like to, you know, I don't know. They have this attraction for uh, sleazy, abusive men. I think, I think it has something to do with I think uh, 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 Lana Del Rey has a song, uh, Ride, it's called, and yeah. in it she portrays, I don't know if she portrays or does she actually lives this life or live this life, but she lives the life of a bad girl, hangs with motorcycle guys and beds them and... Lo a slut, that. a low class yeah. slut. Yeah. But, so I think that some of this stuff like this has to do with somebody wanting you. You mean This that is an overriding thing. It, it, it makes them, uh, it, it has to, it's connected with their self-esteem. Somebody wants them, somebody desires them. Now, I, yes. As exactly. opposed to nobody wanting them. Exactly. I mean, alienation is something a lot of teenagers, you know. Do you them. think these teenagers, uh, are lacking something at home with their I'm parents. I'm sure they are, but uh, you know. Because if they need to find love from a... a in a, all the wrong places. In all the wrong places, yeah. uh, from a negative, uh, bad individual. They're coming from an empty place. There's something empty right. at home. Yeah. He sent her a text that if she didn't answer his call within seven minutes, he was either going to shoot himself or cut himself. Go ahead. Put a noose around his neck and jump off the stool. <laughs> he included a picture of his arm with a knife held against it. Report it to the police and have them have them locate his parents and uh, deal with it. You know, uh, you know, people like that make excellent fertilizer. By the way, for your garden. She thinks her compliance is all that's standing in the way of this boy killing himself. He's using ah! this. He's psyching her out. 
Ah, using. It's just a tool to to make her feel bad, so she complies with all of his wishes. It's like, like a the bratty child. It's like the mother ma laying the guilt trip on the on the uh, children, you know, even when they're older. Or the children laying the guilt trip on a mommy and daddy. They do that also. Uh -huh. I hate you. I'm going to run away from home. If you don't give don't me what I want. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Like, let's say the kid wants the most expensive video game that there is. And you the parents say, me. no, 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 I can't afford it. No, you're not getting it. And the kid goes, I hate you. I hate this house. I hate this house. I'm going to run away from home. Lay the guilt trip, right? I'm scared for her safety. But she won't listen to me because she loves him. What love? She's only 13. What love? When I called the boy's mother about it, she became defensive. Then and accused me of implying she was a bad mother. Yeah, maybe she was a bad mother. Too damn bad. Yeah, maybe, you, maybe she was a bad mother. Is a bad mother. I would say, look, cut the crap. Take care of your son's situation or I'm going to the police. Take care of it now. Cease and desist or I'm going to, it's going to be trouble. That's what I would tell her. It's going to be trouble, man. Please tell me how to handle this. With the shillelagh. Or worse. Answer. It's time... To have a non-confrontational conversation ah, with your daughter about the dynamics of emotional blackmail. Is she going to listen? Because ex that's exactly what she's experiencing. Is she going to be logical and, and listen to this, this intervention? Your daughter needs to realize that the boy appears to have serious emotional problems. That's not the problem of her or her family. It's not her problem. It's It should be reported to the police, and that's it. Then the police will make, make sure that if the kid needs to see a school shrink or another shrink outside of school, that the kid will be getting this therapy. But it's yeah. not the, the girlfriend, the 13-year-old's family's problem. The police may overreact and shoot them. <laughs> Good. Good. And as much as she may love him, she's not equipped to help him or to prevent him from hurting himself if he really wants to. The kid sounds like he needs old-fashioned discipline. Maybe he doesn't have a father there, or maybe his father doesn't get involved in his life. You know, it's possible. Maybe, maybe, maybe. He's a delinquent. And he needs to be uh, undelinquented. No, that's not a word. <laughs> as long okay. as Lizzie sees herself as a hero. Lizzie Borden. Who is saving his life by sacrificing hers. Ah, oh, come on. What is this, Romeo and Juliet? He won't get the help he needs. She so, if she really cares. She shouldn't be about him. And I have no doubt she does. Come on! They're treating the, like, this girl like she was 18, 19 years old. She's 13. She will end the relationships. But how she... She will end the relationship. Because it isn't a healthy one for either of them. Young girls are like that are fickle. You know how many so-called relationships they go through? It's not a relationship. It's like a puppy love or whatever but, you want to call it. It's an infatuation. But she feels it as most important in her life. You know, some dead teenagers, they, they, uh, 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 a little bullying, I'm not going to make a light of it, but a little bullying in school or some other problem, they commit suicide. Because they can make things that you and I consider small and they're whatever into they're, big. Because they're idiots. Hey, do you think a teenage girl that goes to, eh, let's say, a Justin Bieber concert and oh, she's dear. crying and she's screaming 
and carrying on like somebody's killing her. Come on, you really think that's that's real genuine desire and emotion or love? It, it, it's it's craziness. They're, these these are children. I'm sure these if are kids. You spoke to some of the women today who acted that way for the Beatles. Same thing. They would say differently today. They, well, they uh, would understand on a more mature level. Listen, you know, I, I, somebody I used to date in the 1980s was actually in the Ed Sullivan Theater when the Beatles made their debut, and she told me with the sound was so deafening from the girls that you could not hear the Beatles at all, and the Beatles themselves could not hear one another. It was that deafening, and, but they were teenage girls, and I'm sure they did it with Elvis and uh, so on and so forth. And um, you know, it's right. not it's not real love. I mean, this person who's writing the story is making it sound like she's an adult woman with real feelings. Well, she has real feelings. That's what I just but said it's before. But it's not a real love relationship. She's but 13. She doesn't. But people don't know that until, in hindsight. Kids, adults, whatever. So she has to go through it and learn the hard way and take the fall. Well, she doesn't have to go through it. She could, like the uh, dear Abby told her here, to cut the relationship. You know... She uh, is not... <coughs> capable of handling him. Is it? Is it? When you say hindsight, is it similar to uh, the reason why? I didn't say hindsight either. No, hindsight. hindsight. Is is it similar to the reason why uh, most people have to hit rock bottom in their life before they find God, and all of a sudden they look for Him after yep. they hit rock bottom? Yep. And they yeah. give their testimony. Oh, I was so addicted to drugs. I was, I was an alcoholic. I was an alcoholic. I was near death. I was a goner. Oh wow! I did. I lost everything. Oh, uh, addicted to this. Addicted to that. But I found the Lord now. But guess what? What? It could all be nothing. What do you mean, finding the Lord? Yeah. You mean the Lord has to find you. You do not find the Lord. I well, keep saying it. well, if it made them he give up, you. if it made them give up their addiction, I would Fine. say that I would say that's a positive thing. But it thing. may not have anything to do with the Lord. Then how did then what? It was something inside them. What divine intervention made them give there up? There was no divine inter intervention. It was them. Well, for, to give up uh, uh, habits, addictive they habits. They did it on their own. They did it on their own. People, some people don't understand that they have this uh, inside them, this strength. This wiggle. Well, the strength wasn't there when they were addicted, when they were hitting rock bottom, right? They because had to hit they rock. Didn't focus on it, maybe. They had to hit rock bottom to find this inner strength. Exactly. Exactly. In other words, but what I mean, you're I saying is to do with God. What you're saying is God selects you and ha He finds you. Only for a reason. Not because you're you. You have to be able to do a job in the millennium for him, out of Jerusalem. But you're making you're making God sound like an employment agency that calls you to send you on an assignment. Exactly. What about the part of the Bible that says that God uh, will provide everything for you if you if you for those seek He him? has called. Not for the vast majority of mankind. So, what about all those people that died, drowned in the flood? None of them were born again, or got the Holy Spirit, no. or were called by God. Right. They are dead. Or the... Uh, Awaiting or, a resurrection. Or the well-loved, dedicated, 40-year fire, fireman from Wallington, New Jersey, who, who was... Uh, in, who fell in a collapsed roof and, and died and everybody loved him and, and uh -huh. I mean uh, he, he was a good man that was taken uh -huh. you know uh, well people that will die before their time they that was an accident they're not it, accidents happen it's not it, it, sometimes like there's no logical reason for them to to die before their time you know they could be great people 
and and it was an accident, like you, you said, yeah. Yeah, because but but that has nothing to do with the person's longevity on the earth, whether he's good, bad, ugly, or or in between. Well, because everybody is is None going that means anything. Going to be resurrected anyway. Those who weren't called. Yeah. Those who are called will be resurrected in the twinkling of an eye in, uh, I believe it's 2 Corinthians 15. They'll be ready. They will be at Jerusalem. They'll be ready to go. They will be turned into God beings yeah. immediately. There's no white throne, there's no judgment, they're, they're just ready They've to go. They've already gone through their judgment. They're ready to go. Per so, se. so once they're resurrected, they're like, they're there. They are God they're, beings. The God beings at Jerusalem, immediately, boom, they're there. Okay. They will. That, that is what people misinterpret as the rapture. Those people will come out of their graves as God beings and they will go up into the sky to meet Jesus as he's coming the, down. The 144,000. Now, an evangelical that seems to do Bible study every week tells me that 144,000 is not actually 144,000. It means... What is it, billions? It means millions. Ah, I see. Yeah, it's like, well, I don't want to get it. It's calling God a liar. It's like simple as that. If it's a duck, it's, it looks like a duck, walks like a duck. It's a duck. One hundred forty-four thousand is one hundred forty-four thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And so read uh, uh, two Corinthians uh, fifteen. Read it, and then say to yourself, well, "Wait a minute, that's only a certain amount of people that are beca becoming uh, God beings at that time. Not everybody. They How just. Come? They what just. What about the rapture? There's be millions of people. They're probably just scared out of their wits to experience the tribulation. Maybe that's it. That's what the hell do they want to experience it for? They don't want to experience oh. it. They want to avoid it. <laughs> well, they ain't going to. You know? They ain't going to. Yeah. Only the church. Right. The true church will be carried away to a safe place. And like I was telling my French uh, like friend, was. Uh, who is a member of some of my groups, Mr. Jean-Luc Audon, uh, the... Uh, the metaphysical mysterious scientist from France he um, told me that uh, being a Christian does not require the building of a multi a million dollar palace and and and, and everything in gold and you, you mean know. like the Roman Catholic Church yeah he was mm. referring to that he said I and see. I told him I says well from what I understand the early Christians some of them met in caves or in homes, right? That's correct. The real Christians. The real Christians. Okay. Right. But what happened was in, in 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 history was that the what became known as Christian with Constantine, Emperor Constantine, etc., was the Roman Catholic Church. That is the version of Christianity that came to us, came to us through the Reformation with the Protestant Reformation. The real Christians, the one church that Jesus created, was crucified, killed, and martyred. The martyred, yeah. And everything over the millennia. There are truths of the Bible that have not been heard in 2,000 years. Wow. We are only learning them today. Right. First. So, how could anyone let's say, through these 2,000 years, read the Bible and understand it. Right. It was denied them. Right. So just like a few people in modern days, like uh, Herbert W. Armstrong, David C. Pack, and, and, and others, uh, just now uh, pr brought the truths. Were given to understand yeah. certain prophecies. The truths have been there, like 18 or whatever truths had been there. The Albensias, the mm -hmm. Waldensians, the, uh, the Cathars, I believe. Many, many, many uh, sects have carried on these truths, or some of the truths, throughout time. Yeah. They've been there. But no one, uh, until recently, has put them all together. I understand. I've been in a relationship with a basically good man we're both in our 60s for three years. We have many things in common, enjoy each other most of the time, but some of his behavior is very difficult and tiring to deal with. 
if he makes a mistake of any sort, he becomes angry and often throws the offending item never at me. He hates to admit he's done anything wrong and has lied numerous times. At his place he keeps everything very neat. At my place he couldn't care less. No, oh, he's an asshole. Although he will offer to help me when I ask for his assistance. We've had many conversations about this attitude and behavior. He says he most certainly will take care of it. Yeah, sure. That lasts about two days. Maybe he had a very demanding father that criticized him all the time and put him down? Or... He becomes so negative at times that it just wears me out. Well, it's an, you know, I know people like this online. You know what? They're like Barney the Dinosaur. Let me tell you something. It's a negative world we live in. So, accept it. You know, it, it wears them out. It's a negative world, you know? I mean, the end times are negative. I'm really becoming so tired of it all. But I don't want to give up before asking your advice. What am I missing here? These people, they think this world, this modern world is so positive. It's not. Is there any hope that he will correct any of this? Walk, Answer! Walk through life with your account of this relationship is that your guy is negative, deficient, angry, and inconsiderate. Well, inconsiderate could be changed. He is a project in need of constant correction, and then he is either too set in his ways or too negligent to stay corrected. Sounds like he is trying, but he just can't get there. You are locked in a ridiculous and exhausting dynamic with him. Not only is this not good for you, but imagine how he feels to be such a consistent disappointment. If you want to stay in this relationship, your choices are to either accept his considerable flaws and go all in with him as is, or draw up a short list of non-negotiables. Let him know what they are, and let all the other stuff go. Maybe he's got to see somebody. Maybe they have to see someone. Counselor. If someone throwing an object in anger is one of your non-negotiables, it would be on my list. Unless said object is a basketball, then the next time it happens, you're done. If being lied to is on your list of non-negotiables, again, this would be on my list. And if you get lied to, then you're done. Oh, and you God. don't go back. Well, what about, um, is this like boyfriend and girlfriend, or are they... Yes, they are not married. Oh. Yeah. Hey, people have issues today, you know, it's very common, you know, and uh, there's all different reasons for it. Usually it's, uh, you know, dickheads uh, for parents cool. that, that start it all, you know. So, hey, there's a lot of people that shouldn't have pets. They should not have pets at all, and there's a lot of people that should not be parents, but sometimes shit happens and, you know, somebody gets pregnant and there's and, and everybody wants to keep the baby nowadays and that's Some it. Some shit happened the other day Yeah. with a couple. Either they were evicted from their house or something, and the landlord went in there and he found a dead baby in the toy box. Yep. Yes. Yes, yes, I, I was reading that article <laughs> yesterday. Uh, a, a toddler yep. stuffed in a toy box. Um, what about the uh, the black girl in um, Daytona Beach, driving, Florida? Yeah, into the water the, with the three kids. Was, yeah, driving her vehicle into the ocean. She was the taking kids. them to a uh, safer place. Yeah, Davy Jones's locker? Heaven. 
heaven? Yeah. She she was playing God by deciding to kill her children. Taking them yeah, to a better place. Yeah, but she was place. even. <clears throat> it's worse than that because she was, she was taking them to a a a a, a fake reality. Her idea of heaven, the Christian idea of heaven. It's a fake reality. Well, if, look, if things are really that bad, and you're a, a woman with children, and you're real poor... And she was in an abusive relationship. There are more... Well, first you have to get out of the abusive relationship, but there are more programs for single mothers, for females, which with minors, with uh, children, than for anybody else in America. I mean, that... You know, there's no reason to hurt your children and commit suicide. I mean, uh, but, but that's logic speaking. They're not thinking. They're not uh, thinking. Well, logical, then you know what? Kill yourself and leave your poor innocent children alone. If you don't want to be logical, it's the same thing with a fat, an obese person who wants to save their their life and lose the weight and get healthy but they they want somebody to hold their hand like Richard Simmons and cry with them and and, and sugarcoat everything no mm. pun intended the, no it's hard work it takes persistence and dedication you know you gotta suck it up and you gotta do what you have to do now if a person doesn't really want to help themselves don't harm innocent children. Don't harm your kids. Friggin', uh, you know, you want to kill yourself? Hang yourself, but don't hurt the children. That's what I'm saying. Do it cleanly, please. Well, if a person wants to die, I don't think they're concerned about leaving a mess behind. You know, just like it doesn't matter. Remember what you said before? Oh, we haven't heard the dog, and the door is open. Oh, he comes oh he's here now. He is now. Speaking of nutrition, consuming high levels of protein, particularly meat, milk, and cheese, yeah. is a bad strategy if you're at midlife and aiming to live into old age. New research shows. But another study out on Tuesday revealed that in older age, fortifying one's diet with more protein-rich foods may be a formula for extending your life. Go ahead. I thought you can shut the door. He stopped barking. Oh. Wait, you know, what extends your life? I'm sorry. You can eat more protein when you're elderly. Oh, you can. Than when at midlife or before. Well, the elderly lose valuable body mass, don't they? Yes. Without the loosening the branch chains, whatever. Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Protein, uh, muscle tissue is predominantly uh, leucine, which is the the, the amino acid. Leucine, isoleucine, and valine, but you need all the eight essentials. An article published in the journal Cell Metabolism says that in an 18-year study, middle-aged Americans who consumed the most protein were four times more likely to die of cancer or diabetes and twice as likely to die of any cause than those who ate the least protein. I would say red meat is the culprit when it comes to cancer, especially from an American supermarket where the, the meat is loaded with hormones and antibiotics. But if you have enough fiber with it, you get it out so that it doesn't sit there and uh, putrefy. I'm sorry, the hormones will get into your system. Well, the hormones are a different story. Yes. Oh, you're talking about uh, consumption of red meat. And getting it out of your intestines within a good uh, Period of time. Well, the transit time of uh, General, fecal yeah. matter, of evacuation of the colon must be rapid, and the only way to do that is to get enough fiber. Uh, I was told that uh, if you get enough fiber, <clears throat> you do, do not need to take probiotics. You 
because fiber encourages the growth. Uh, of, and that's the what the FOS. <coughs> well, fructooligosaccharides. Right. Yeah. That's the fuel. Uh, is <coughs> a fuel type, for them. It's a type of carbohydrate. Fuel. Yeah. It's not like a carbohydrate that turns to sugar. It's a type of carb that uh, feeds probiotics. Like uh, bananas are supposed to be rich in FOS. You know. But a high protein diet had the opposite effect on Americans 66 and older. A group of American Italian researchers found those whose diets were highest in protein were 60% less likely to die of cancer. And overall deaths were down 28% from the rate of those with the lowest protein intake. You say Italian and American scientists or Italian American scientists? Italian and. Okay, because I, I don't want no Italian American scientists working on anything to be going, hey, yo, hey. Hey, hey, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me study this uh, situation here. Hey, hey. <laughs> Your stage in life matters. Some have said for years that proteins are bad. That's half right what? and half wrong. Proteins are essential to building blocks of life. Are you kidding me? Tapping a national database of 6,381 Americans' health and nutrition behaviors, the team found that for people between 50 and 65 who got 20% or more of their daily calories from animal protein, the risk of death was comparable to the risk from smoking and cigarettes. Hmm. Whether the rest of their diet was dominated by fat or carbohydrates made no difference. But if the source of protein was heavily plant-based, nuts and legumes, the increased risk of cancer death declined. That's true. And heightened risk of death from all causes disappeared. Among older people, the protein source was less important. It was important only that they eat more protein which helps sustain and build weight and muscle mass. Yeah, protein is essential for, uh, for muscle mass. It's, a, it's an essential macronutrient. You need it. You need it. Protein, like, you, know, like and you also need water. You know, um, so what do you got there? What are we doing on time? How much time we have? couple minutes. <clears throat> so we have time for one more reading? This memorable winter is about to set another wreck. Damn right. The Great Lakes are now more than 90.5 percent ice covered. Really? When's the last time that happened? Not just a Great Lake, all of them. That's the world's largest ice skating rink. That's the most extensive ice cover coverer in 34 years. Oh, 34 years. Oh, so since it happened, 1979. So it happened. It happened um, not in prehistoric times, but in, in, in 20, 20th century. I wonder if anybody really knows how really cold it was when George Washington was at Valley Forge. No to idea. measure it with today or this winter. When you're done, I'm going to ask you a question about some current news topic that I, I read. See if you have the article. In 1979, the ice covering was 94.7 percent, so there was more than the largest ever recorded. This year, we will pass that because in the next few days it will be another 5% easy. A science degree isn't required to understand what's driving this bitterly cold air. Well, the, the, the polar vortex comes straight down from the Arctic. 
I look at the weather forecast and it looks like another week or so of freezing. Really? Uh, you know, recently um, a, um, a bird like a dinosaur fossil was discovered with in, feathers. in China with feathers and flesh and everything. Did, uh, did our local newspaper uh, no. put this in? No, I well, think they, well, they suck. Did you put it on Facebook? That's where I saw it last yes. night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was found in China. So there's plenty of DNA for uh, Jurassic Park there. What's wrong with it with our local paper? In advocating against an increase in the minimum wage, the letter writer makes the error of equating her own unique experience from more than three decades ago to the world of today. From de-industrialization, globalization, outsourcing of jobs, and increases in the number of long-term unemployed resulting from so-called free trade agreements to explosive increases in the prices of education, health care, housing, and fuel. We are worlds away from the land of opportunity that she and her family arrived in back in the early 1980s. It became a country of price gougers and greedy usury. To suggest that we ought not ensure that those who work will be able to afford to pay their rent or mortgage take their children to the doctor, live a life of modest comfort, save for retirement, all things that are near impossible to do. They won't be able to do it. On an annual wage of less than $15,000. Oh, God. Oh. Which is what the current federal minimum wage adds up to. Believe that? It's is still in the poverty uh, uh, that's the below point. the poverty level. That's the point. And they're making a big deal about yes. ten dollars and ten cents an hour. It will, it will. Uh, jobs will be lost. Businesses will close down. You know what they said on the news last night? Oh, the economy is booming. There's there's so many new jobs uh, that were created. One hundred seventy-five thousand. Yeah. Oh, things are looking good. Uh, but they want to see what happens. <coughs> Every month, I believe it's you're supposed to have <coughs> 225,000 jobs created. And do you believe that, malarkey? Of course not. That's not malarkey. That's that's uh, perception crap. So that you'll believe that instead of the you know redistributing the money downward. Well, the person from the government that was telling the news reporter, his eyes were all over the place. He wasn't making, maintaining eye contact with uh -huh. the uh, news reporter. Then he was lying. From the government. Then he was lying. Anyway, what she said was both absurd and callous. It may have been possible to do those things on those wages in 1980, but certainly not in 2014. No. Readers wishing to offer Horatio Alger-like testimonies ought to at least ensure that their tales are no more than a decade old and therefore of some relevance to those living in the present. Well, that should be it, right? There's no more small ones. That's it. All right. Thank you for joining us for Progressive Discussions this week. Um, we got, um, I guess, next week's, next Saturday's or progressive discussions for the following week. Uh, but, no, no, no. It'll be two weeks before uh, St. Patrick's Day. That's right. It, it, it's not... Um, no, wait a minute. St. Patrick's Day is not this... 17th. It's not this Monday, but the following Monday. Correct. So next Saturday's progressive discussion... You'll be dressed in green. Yeah. You'll I'll, be kissing the Blarney. Yeah, I'll be, you know... And I didn't say stung. Well, I'll, I'll most likely wear my, uh, the tie I have with the shamrocks on it. The green and gold tie I have. I shot him, he got I, 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 unless I see a really, really cool leprechaun hat that looks good, 
I won't wear it, you know, uh, unless it, I don't want to wear some cheap plastic uh, leprechaun hat, you know, but uh, or derby. It's got to look good, you know. But anyway, um, that's it. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Now now the big mouths out there are talking. Yeah, yeah are yakking. Show is over. They, they, you know, they, 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 they can't get on the show. They behave like they're the only ones that live in the neighborhood. Yak, 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 yak. Shut the fuck up. You know, oh, I forgot to tell the story. Speaking of yak, 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 yak. You know, hope I'm not behaving like Lieutenant Colombo coming back and forth, back and forth. I, w I went to um, my favorite buffet, you know, the Flaming Grill Buffet in Rutherford, New Jersey, for lunch. It's pretty good, seven dollars and forty cents, and you can—they have everything there: uh -huh. Bar barbecue, sushi. You they have get, everything, uh, huh? You, you didn't get the norovirus? No. And uh, oh, and, and the fruit uh, where they had the fruit, they had fresh mango. And you know, well, they also had strawberries and pineapple, but you know I ate the mango. Strawberries are heavily sprayed. Yeah, well, the mangoes are expensive fruit to buy, like over a dollar each. A dollar for one. Anyway, I ate pretty damn good. I ate, I ate uh, all fish because it was... Fish day. It was Lent. It was a Friday. I thought Lent was Wednesday. No, that was, that was Ash Wednesday. Right. So any, anyway, I ate all seafood. I ate really good. What? Who sat in the table next to me is two fat women, and one of them, the younger one, wouldn't shut the hell up. She's like, yak, 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 ba, 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 ba. She didn't, she didn't even come up for air. I don't even know how she found the time to eat. eat herself, yeah. It's like she's and chewing, 30 chewing times. and talking, but it was constant. Shut the hell up. Ba, 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 ba. I couldn't relax. And then uh, I had to go to the, to the restroom. I go in the men's room and I need to use the stall. <gasps> and what is the guy next door in the stall doing? He's yapping on his cell phone while he's you know, instead of doing his business in the in the men's room store, he takes the call and he's sitting on a commode with a cell phone in his hand. Ba 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 ba. I mean, don't people know how to shut their phones off when they're in the bathroom? Why must people constantly be on the damn cell phone? They're very important people. VIPs. Even they can't even take take a shit in peace. Nope. They wouldn't shut up. It's like, ba 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 I mean, shut the friggin' phone off when you're going to the bathroom, you know? And as far as the girl goes, you know, eat in peace. Shut the hell up and chew. You know, I'm trying to relax, and she's like, wouldn't shut the hell up. So I just wanted to tell that story. Wonderful. All right. Say goodbye to these people. Goodbye, wonderful people. Yeah, right. <laughs>